Hey everyone, how we doing? Uh, we're having a fantastic Friday, a terrific Thursday. Yeah, I said Thursday. Yeah, what of it? <laughs> Usually terrific Tuesday. I don't know what alliteration you could use for Thursday. Uh, I might have to workshop that. But uh, I hope we're all having a wonderful day regardless of your time zone or where you are. Today we are going to be making a viewer request by Panamansa Mimi. Uh, we are making pecan pie cheesecakes. Um, the written now, the few things we need to uh, look out for for this recipe is it does tell you to uh, let it sit over a day or overnight for it to fully set. We might sort of try accelerate that, accelerate that, accelerate that. There we go. Accelerate that a little bit faster by throwing it in the freezer, maybe. That and I'm making small cheesecakes. I'm not going to make a nice big nine inch cheesecake. We're going to make little pate foie cheesecakes. So hopefully we can get it all to work and all to do the right thing. Not only that, uh, cooking time is going to be about an hour with an hour cooldown. Now because we're doing smaller ones, we're going to be able to do that in less time and possibly have less time cooldown. So let's hope for the best uh, and hope we do a good job with the uh, the mini cheesecakes. Cheesecake! Yeah, Simba! Cheesecake! I think it's a bit of a fan favourite amongst everybody. Um, I know it's Tell's favourite. It's Tell's number one favourite dessert. Anytime I mention cheesecake, it's just like, Cheesecake? Cheesecake? <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, we're going to have a nice, big, long recipe. I'm not sure if the camera's picking up on that. But, uh, we have a nice big full page recipe today instead of just a little scribble at the top. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to follow it. Whatever. Lots of, lots of steps, lots of steps. What, what, and it says, it seems like a lot of ingredients, but it's actually not. Actually not. We're just going to be reusing a lot of ingredients uh, in different things. So, we're going to have four parts to this recipe. Also, how are we doing, Ember? I hope we're doing well today. It's winter break, yeah? It's officially winter break. That means it's all done and dusted. You don't have to stress about school until the new year. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna have four parts to this uh, to this cheesecake. We're gonna have a crust, we're gonna have a filling, we're gonna have the cheesecake itself, and then we're gonna have a bit of a topping on the top of it. Well, I mean, where else would you put the topping? I mean, you can put the topping in the bottom, but that would make it a bottom, bottoming. Then, wouldn't it? Uh, so for the crust, we're gonna need two cups of graham cracker crumbs. Uh, we don't have graham crackers here in Australia. Uh, and if we do, it's at a specialty store. The next best alternative is Grantia. Grantia. Grantia biscuits. Titch. Titch. Camera on. Activating Ben's camera. So these ones here. I might actually, uh. uh that's what I want. Back to where it was. Boop. Grantia biscuits. Boop, boop, boop. So that's gonna be the next best thing if you're in Australia. Or ginger snaps. Ginger snaps will work really good too. Uh, we're gonna uh, blitz these up in a, in a wee little bit. Uh, good, I've been helping my mum and dad Christmas shop. Uh, we're on our, back, wait, on our way back home now. Ooh, Christmas shopping. Christmas shopping can be very stressful. I hope it, was, it went all well. Because, um, yeah, that's. Not. I, 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 I think I say this every time around this, this year. Um, and I sort of mentioned it to other people that tell me and ask me about it. I feel a little bit lucky because I don't really do Christmas shopping. And that's because a, little, a couple of years ago, my family had uh, sort of come to the conclusion that uh, it's hard to buy gifts for, for us. We're all grown adults. Um, whatever we want for Christmas, we're usually going to get it anyway because it's on sale and it's like, oh, I want it now. I don't want it to wait for Christmas. So we sort of just said, you know what? We're not going to worry too much about presents. We want, we want each other's presents, not their presents, if that makes sense. <laughs> But uh, now that we have the niece on the scene, uh, of course you're gonna you're gonna buy you're gonna buy the little one um, something for Christmas. So we only have to really worry about one person, or at least I have to uh, worry about one person at the moment. But at the moment, but um, but yeah, I, I know just how crazy and stressful and silly the Christmas shopping can be. There's a reason why we call it the silly season. People be silly. <laughs> So yes, we're going to need two cups of graham crackers, crumbs. We're going to need a third of a cup of brown sugar. We're going to need 113 grams of 
felt uh, salted butter. We're going to be using salted butter and everything today. I'm used to using unsalted butter, but because we're using an American recipe, most of these are going to be salted. That's what I've sort of noticed, but it is what it is. But yeah, we're going to need 113 grams of butter, which I'm pretty sure is half a cup of butter, melted. And that's what we're going to be for the crust. For the filling, we're going to need, I'm pretty sure this is a third of a cup, which is 100, oh, not 100, uh, 70, 76 grams of salted butter. We're going to need a cup of sugar, a cup of light corn syrup, two eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one and a half cups of chopped pecans. Pecans or pecans? I say pecans. We're going to say pecan. The pecan pie. Uh, for the cheesecake itself, we're going to need uh, 16 ounces or 450 grams of softened cream cheese, a cup of sugar, a quarter of a tea teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of flour, one no, that's one and a half tablespoons, sorry, one and a half tablespoons, uh, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, three eggs, and a half cup of sour cream. And for the topping, we're going to need 57 grams, which I think is a quarter of a cup of salted butter. We're going to need a third of a cup of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a quarter of a cup of heavy cream, and a cup of roughly chopped pecans. But it, it seems like there's a lot of rest, a lot of ingredients, but uh, it's pretty much just brown sugar, sugar, butter. We're just repeating the stuff and just put it in different sections. We're just dividing everything. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I still have four younger siblings, so they like the big sis expertise. So, so they like the big sis expertise I provide. Mmm, nice, nice. Morning, Ma. How we doing? How we doing well? We, uh... Nah, yeah, I think you, you sort of the same same time that I have off. But, uh, hope your week was well. Um, might message you later after stream about some stuff that's happening later tonight. Um, but, uh, yes. Um, yeah, uh, what are we going to start with? We're going to start with making the... Uh, biscuit base. So uh, instead of using a uh, a nine inch pan like the recipe says, we're going to be using twelve centimeter pans. Look at that! It's small, just my hands bigger than it. <laughs> Nicole, hello. I am doing well. I'm actually doing quite well. Things have started to look up outside of stream. So uh, yeah. I'm in a little bit of a better mind frame in a sense. And it's nearly Christmas. Which means long weekend. When I, when I say long weekend, it's actually I'm actually having a week off over Christmas. And that's because of public holidays and the days I have off. And it is going to be fantastic. <laughs> they are tiny, but I hope you're doing well, Nicole. You're good? That's great to hear. So yeah, we're gonna be using small little pants. We're gonna make them tiny little pants. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually going to say I'm a little bit disappointed in these ones because I have other springform pans that uh, they have a, a wider base and it's easier to sort of put paper on. If that makes sense. But it has like a little lip around the outside. Let's see if I can put it here. So it's got like a little lip around the outside. And you can sort of just put a piece of paper over the top put the ring over it, close it, and then just trim the outside. It's nice and easy. I get it. This is supposed to be more neater in a sense, but yeah, come on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're going to do uh, blitz up some thing else. We're going to blitz up some uh, some bickies. I'm going to disconnect my bench top mixer. Oh, okay. No problem. I hope to see you soon. I'm about to lose phone service, not a problem, not a problem. I know that all too well. Poor phone or cellular service, I know that all too well. Well, I hope to see you soon. So, uh, can I? I think that's probably gonna be the safest bit there. Right, so we're just gonna blitz up some bickies. Some bickies. I'm gonna use my big attachment today because, yeah, we're gonna. Not sure how much two cups it is to packets. Uh, I will boast and say I do prefer Australian recipes when it comes to doing cheesecakes because they'll just say use a full pack. So it's like 250 grams. So just grab a pack of bickies off the shelf. Just just go down to Woolies, just pack one, pick one off the shelf. That's it. That's all you need. <laughs> but uh, I'm tipping that 
one. Hmm. We'll blitz up one at a time. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, what happened? What happened? Alrighty. I always say uh, sorry about the loud noise, but I keep forgetting I have a noise cap that sort of doesn't make it go too crazy. But still, I'm uh, going to be making loud noise with, um, with the blender. So, get ready for that. And before I do that, instead of seeing the base of the camera, what's this all about? I'll, uh, I'll message, I'll message you with later about that. <laughs> I'll message you later about that. Uh, now, hang on. If we do back to... Ah, oh, yes. You, we can see chat in the background as well. <laughs> I keep forgetting, I've got my phone camera, which means I can do a wide-angle shot or a close-angle shot. And if I do a wide-angle shot, then you can actually see the whole blender without me going... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. All right, let's make some noise. Balls as well. And my scales. The only problem I have with this blender, it's a good blender, don't get me wrong, it's a very good blender, but for some reason it doesn't like to pick up everything that's in there. It's a damn well, a damn, oh hang on, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. Ah, it feels like, ow. No, I actually cut myself. Cool. Don't be like me. Don't put your fingers in there. Do I have a band-aid? Yes, I do. If it becomes a problem, we'll put a band-aid on. <laughs> Take the blade out first, and then check. Let's look at this hand so I don't get blood everywhere. Okay. Ah, let's see. There we go. There we go. So we've got some, got some chunks in there still. No problem. I thought they were going to be like big, big chunks, but... Uh, Maybe I've just been impatient in the past and had, uh... Oh no, I've got some... Look at this crumb in the center. Oh no. Oh no. Alright. I'm gonna have to, uh... duck off camera for a second. We've, uh, we've activated the blood rule. It's not a big deal, it's just... gonna be a problem. <laughs> just a little bit of a goober. A little bit of a gooby dribble. It's annoying, it's dumb, and I hate it. I'm just too excited to make these cheesecakes. I'm not thinking straight. Ah! That, nah. I'm almost out of band-aids too. That's alarming. Perfect. Perfect. I don't have my bright blue ones like you should have in kitchens, but uh, I had a packet from when I was over in Japan. Why don't I have them? Blisters. I had those uh, had those packets of that packet of um, uh, we call it band aids. <laughs> it's just talking about them. So I've already forgotten what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've got a packet of um, uh, packet of band-aids because I was getting blisters on my feet and it's like well I need something to cover these up so I don't keep hurting myself because I'm doing a lot of walking so I'll be just one packet I'm cool with that I'm cool with it just being one packet it means I've got a packet of biscuits for later that's one cup I think it's gonna be one packet damn it <laughs> Needs more of a spout, I think. Needs more of a spout, so I can just... 
Yeah, would you look at that? It's just gonna be one packet. I'm just gonna do one packet. Easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We take easy days. We take easy days. What did it cost me? It cost me a little nick on my finger. I'll live. I'll live. I don't need to process it that much more. I'll put you back. I'll put you away for now. Pretty sure that's all I need to process it for, just to mince up some cooks. Mince up some cookies. So, oh, do I pull up my pants stands? Uh, right, so now we've got them done and dusted. So we clear up a bit. Uh, what else do we need? We need brown sugar and melted butter. So let's get our melted butter going. That's why I brought my scales. So I can put that there. Oh, excuse me. I think I ask this every year. I'm not going to stop asking this, but uh, is there anything special that people make over the Christmas period for Christmas functions or get-togethers? So, I'm going to not limit it to yourself. I'm going to also say, is there anybody in your family that makes something? So does grandma make a trifle every year? Or does, uh, does your dad uh, I don't know, make some jerky? Anything special like that that, the, that we all do over Christmas? I say grandma and trifle because, well, my grandma makes a trifle and it seems like every year the uh, the old drop of sherry in there gets a little bit bigger, which is not a problem because all the grandkids are getting older. So <laughs> we, always, we have that one auntie that tries it out first and goes, whoa, all right, who's driving home tonight? <laughs> Who's the Dezo tonight? You're the Dezo tonight? Yeah, you're not you're not having any trifle. Well, come on, why can't I have some trifle? I'm trying to put a little bit too much sherry in there. Ah. <laughs> I'll have some of the cheesecake then. Don't have any of the cheesecake either. Well, why not? I'm gonna put half a bowl of basil Baileys in there. Oh. <laughs> My family aren't drunks, okay. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, we are not. We just like Bailey's. And pickled fruitcake. <laughs> Are you still with us, Ma? Um, are you going to be making a... Uh, you're going to be making a cheese... Uh, not a cheesecake, a um, fruitcake this year. If so, have you already started uh, soaking the fruit? <laughs> or have you got uh, some fruit that was... I don't want to sort of call you out on it. Do you have fruit from last year that you still need to use? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was just doing this. I've got a, a little bit of a hammer print in my, um, in my chopping board. <laughs> Fun. Uh, what was, oh, that's right. We're going to get some brown sugar. Third of a cup of brown sugar. Now, it says to use light brown sugar, but I'm just going to use brown sugar that I've got because, hey, I've got brown sugar and I didn't have to buy any, so. Uh, so what we're doing at the moment is we're just combining the, the brisket crumbs, the brown sugar, and the butter until so we get a bit of a uh, okay, soft crumb paste. I think that's the best way to describe it. Uh, and then we're going to line our tins and we're going to push the... Um, it's a crumb on there, and then we're going to freeze it so it's nice and stiff for when we put our filling and cheesecake in. So that is wonderfully melted. Uh, where's my whisk? I'm just going to grab a whisk for this. Let's mix that all together. Don't want to over melt it because then it starts popping and I have to clean my microwave. I mean, I should be cleaning my microwave, but then I have to clean my microwave. I don't know how to feel. really be bothered cleaning our microwave from time to time. I mean, look, it is the Christmas season. We should be making sure that we're... Now, here's a good question. Good, good question for people who are in a different in a different hemisphere, should I say. Do you do cleaning over Christmas? Do you, like, do you do a New Year's clean? I know there's a thing, spring cleaning, obviously. So, during the months of spring, everybody does... A big old clean around their house. 
We do one over winter as well, at the end of the year. Because it baffles me to know that, well, obviously financial year is middle of the year. So June, July is the, the, the new financial year. But it baffles me to know that school years in Northern Hemisphere start and finish mid-year. Because it's always been for us, like as soon as the new year's finished, that's it. You're, you're, in, you're in first grade, you finish that year, New Year's, new year's Day comes, you're in January, now you're in grade two. It just baffles me to know that over in other countries, like midway through the year, it's like you were in grade two in August, well not August, let's, let's say like June, July, yeah, you're, you're in the next grade. What? <laughs> Should do this real quick. Where's my? I said I hate the fact that I hate the fact that. Uh... <laughs> um, oops. I hate the fact that this tripod has a level on it. <laughs> now every time I adjust, it's like, is it? It's um, it's not even. <laughs> my my thing's not even. Great, just great. Probably should. Nah, we'll be fine. Now, we probably should line our trays first. But we're already here now. We're already here now. Might as well just get mixing. Beautiful. So this is where I can see ginger snaps being good. Ginger snaps would be a good, good replacement for here as well. I was thinking of using like arrowroot biscuits or um, just like basic, basic normal bickies, but uh... oh, this has got not only a good colour, but yeah, it's probably gonna have a good taste and smell as well. Okay, so that's gonna be our biscuit base done. Let's, uh, hmm, our question is going to be. I'm gonna line the bottom of the tins, so I'm gonna cut some cut some squares out and just do the bottom of the tins. And then I'm probably just gonna spray the outside. Because it's spring form. Yeah, I might do that. So if I throw that there, let's. Ah, easy. Do that. Then move you guys aside. Give you guys a sign, we'll just halve. Oh. Come on. Yep. Hmm. Grab my sponge, wipe this knife down. I know I usually, like, you should use scissors to cut these things, but I always throw a knife. Just a little bit easier for me. Just, yep, done. I have to get the knife or the scissors in. <laughs> Dang it. Perfect. Jump from one screen to the other. Damn it, I messed up. Awesome, we did it. So. What I like to do here is. Someone say what we're doing? Yeah, that way you don't have to sort of perfectly go, you know, oh, is this going to be right? This no. <laughs> then yeah, now you go with scissors and you just trim the outside, so it's nice and easy. Look at that. Looks smarter, not harder, I say. Perfectly lined, look at that. Perfect. Let's do this to three more times. Probably need to do it that way, shouldn't I? Oh, so satisfying. This is a satisfying process. We really need two and cut it right to the edge. 
it had a little bit no overhang because the other thing that's going to yes cheesecake yes we are making cheesecake we're making small cheesecakes hey how are we doing today lemon hope you're having a wonderful day wonderful thursday i'm pretty sure hmm what I was gonna say, can we actually call this a cheesecake or is it a pie? Or is it a cheesecake? Or is it a pie? Because it's a pecan pecan cheesecake pie. Or, no, pecan pie cheesecake. Mm. I'm definitely keen for it. I think, it. I think we made a pecan pie last year. We made, a pe oh, we made a pecan pie last year. And it sort of like really got me excited for pecans in general. Because I you just had pecans and walnuts as they are, just fre like fresh or salted, but never like in a pie. So I was like, hmm, this is pretty good. Uh, good uh, I'm good to actually be uh, gonna get a drink so I can sell in. Nice, nice. Take your time, take your time. Get yourself your drink. Also, hey, Tells. Though I'm glad you can make it, because I know you like cheesecake. <laughs> Tells the cheesecake fiend. Okay, so there is Al. Hi, Santa. I'm not that old. <laughs> I don't have a grey beard yet. Uh, I'm gonna give. I'm just gonna give it a light spray. For all, uh, all purposes, I want to do what I used to do at work, but it also was a bit of a disaster when that happened. So. I'd sit there and I'd use the back of my foot to... Uh, here's me better? You can't really see me. I'd use the back of my foot to knock the um the lid off. But, uh, um, yeah, well, it also knocked the top off my spray bottle. And sometimes I'd actually break it all together and say, oh, I was trying to be cool and now I just ruined it. <laughs> Who told you I like cheesecake? Uh, nobody told me. You just are very excited whenever we mention cheesecake on the gameplay streams. <laughs> It's like, hey, we made a cheesecake this day, and you're just like, Someone said cheesecake? <laughs> Pushing people out the side, and it's like, what? It's like that meme, meme where <laughs> someone says, you know, oh yeah, I'm a big fan of anime, and then <laughs> the other person's just like, Someone said anime? What? <laughs> yeah, rip through I can. It's all good. Alright, so. What we're going to do here is with our biscuit trum, we're going to line the bottom and we're going to line the sides as well. It says for the recipe to line it halfway up the sides. If we have enough, I probably will make it go all the way up the sides. That way we've got a full... Uh, is this a good way to... This is a good way. Don't see what's going on. Oh, there we go. Now we're level. Perfect. Definitely going to have enough biscuit crumb to do all of these, but um, yeah. Because <laughs> it's time to get a plane ticket to Australia. Uh, it's probably the best time of the year to do so as well. Uh, can escape the cold, come down to where it's nice and warm. Be beautiful, trust me. <laughs> one of these years, one of these years I'd like to experience a cold winter. When I say cold winter, I mean like a snowy winter. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> the closest thing that we've had to a, uh, a cold winter was probably like or a white winter is, um, uh, what do you call it? When a hail? <laughs> it hail on Christmas. But other than that, if we've got a nice cold winter, it's usually because it's, it's freezing cold. And it's very unexpected because it's supposed to be summer. It's supposed to be summer now. We're supposed to be getting some good weather. I want to do stuff in the yard, but no. Weather says stay inside. But it's not, it's not 2021. We don't need to stay inside. Alright, lockdowns are over. 
All right, I don't want to be gatekeeped by Mother Nature to stay inside. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to say that is pretty good, pretty good. It's going to have like a really nice curve. Uh, we get hail in Cali sometimes mm, during summer. <laughs> okay, one. Really nice. Whoa. I was just just thinking maybe I should invest in like a. Wait, do I? No. <laughs> I was gonna say, do I have something I can just stamp the uh, stamp this stuff in? I do not. The answer is no. I'll make sure I got enough in the bottom too, because I don't want a thin bottom. Nothing's worse than piece of picking up a cheesecake. Easy it smooths. Hmm. Unfortunately, I think this is the smallest tin I've got. I bought these specifically for today. And the smallest I got is a six inch. <laughs> it's a very good idea though. Because so I do have I got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think I go up to twelve. I got, I got a lot of cake tins. I have to. <laughs> I'm the cake guy in the family. In the family. I'm the cake guy. <laughs> I make all of the cakes. Most of them, I say. Uh, the mountains are snowy around January, so there's usually usually the opportunity every year. Okay. Hmm. I've broken the glass stamp in this type of crust. <sighs> mm. Then again, wine bottle. <laughs> I don't have. Well, I do have wine bottles, but they've still got wine in them. Uh, so I know wine bottles are very. They've got a very thick base. How do I know this? Because I had stupid people that I used to go to school with who thought it was a good idea to try kick a wine bottle glass with steel cap boots because they wanted to shatter them like they would a normal beer bottle. I don't associate with this person anymore, for obvious reasons. <laughs> oh. Another good tip if you have a rolling pin with no handles. Oh, hang on, I do. I was about to say, I do have a rolling pin, but it technically doesn't have handles or a closed end. But no, I do. I do have a rolling pin with no handles. Ooh. Well, thank you, Lemon. Makes things a lot easier. Looks like we're only making three. Teamwork, yeah! Might actually go back to those other ones and get a nice flat edge. Two brain cells, yeah! <laughs> hmm. Maybe if I take that and put that over there. Yeah. Now, now I'm gonna grab the other ones to make sure I do the job with them. <laughs> so this one's gonna have a nice thick wall and these ones are gonna have thin walls. I was gonna show off my uh should show off my you know what I'm gonna do it. Uh the 90, 90 inside corner is very satisfying. Yeah yes. Yeah I'm gonna quickly show you my um my other rolling pin. I I bought this rolling pin because I was uh, icing like 10 inch cakes and I needed a rolling pin big enough to uh to roll out icing. Yes, it's just a meter long PVC pipe. I know, but it works. <laughs> and well, because the great thing too is if I drop it, it doesn't get imperfections in it and then I don't have to worry about rolling icing and then having a little pit every now and again. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great little, uh, great little hack that I was told when I was doing uh, what was it? It was it was like a cake decorating course. They taught us how to do sugar flowers, and that's what she said. You know, use use a rolling pin. We we'll use that as a rolling pin. It's like ah, and they're cheap. <laughs> uh, this song means you know, this means this song means to shake the bones. I think I missed the song.
I found a playlist for video game music uh, that was winter themed. And then they had a few ones in there that was like a bit of a joke uh, sort of um, remix that were Christmas themed. I was like, yeah, I want more of them. And then I found this playlist and it's like, mm, you still got the video game music in there, but it is just very heavily Christ Christmas as well. Ah, oh, satisfying. Ooh, satisfying. I like the look of this one the most. Oh, where's my camera? Camera's over there. Just because it's got that nice little rustic finish over the side. These ones are nice and neat. I'd probably sell them in a shop. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, hi, Titch. It seems like Titch is awake today. I thought I was going to get four of them, so... Let's say this is going to be three. All right. We're going to stick these in the freezer while we make the rest of our stuff. All right. So now we're going to make the filling. I have not uh, gone through the recipe properly this whole time. I wrote it out this morning and everything. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, what we've done, we preheated the oven to 160 degrees Celsius or 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we've the parchment paper in tins. We've mixed the biscuit crumb, the sugar, and the butter until they're combined. Press into the pans. Uh, come up, it says halfway up the sides, but we're doing full way up the sides because we're four tins. Uh, place in the freezer to chill. Now we're going to, excuse me, we're going to do the filling next. So we're going to use the uh, the salted butter, the sugar, the light corn syrup, the eggs, and vanilla extract. There was the recipe, so exclamation recipe will show you the recipe that we're using today, which was provided by Pun and Anthony. Um, but uh, it did have alternate ways that you could do it. Um, I've just written it down the nice and easy, the easiest way, which was we melt the butter, then we combine the sugar, the corn syrup, the eggs, the vanilla, and the pecans into a bowl, mix them together. And then we're going to add that to the pot and then cook it through that way but there's other ways where you can leave the eggs aside and put them in one at a time or add the mix to the eggs that way you don't scramble them because obviously the idea is we don't want to throw the eggs straight into the melted butter because we're just going to be making scrambled eggs uh, i purchased this week some rice some rice paper printed flowers for cake decorating Ooh, i don't see myself making sugar flowers I'd rather see actual flowers in a cake uh real flowers are very they look really nice and are very easy to sort of obviously purchase and put onto the cake. Um, sugar flowers, I don't know, I, it does feel like it's a bit of a dead art these days because you can just go to the florist, like you said, just buy fresh flowers and it's nice and nice and beautiful. But um, I don't know, sometimes being able to make a flower that is a complete abomination colour-wise um, is a little bit of fun. Like being able to make like a... I'm just, I'm just trying to think of what colour roses aren't. But being able to make make a rainbow rose, like that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Seen a rainbow rose. I uh, want to grab something to snack. Uh, got work, we'll be back. No problem, tells. No problem. I hope work goes well. Um, take your time, and yeah, I'll just talk to you soon. Um, but yeah, the last the last two cakes that I have made, last two. I think it was the last one that I used flowers on. I purchased fresh flowers. Um, is really annoying because a uh, little story I uh, I made my brother and sister-in-law's wedding cake and I used fresh flowers for that one good, good choice uh, I probably should have put the flowers on the day instead of the day before because they did start to wilt not a part of the story not a part of the story um, the part of the story was I went to a wholesaler for the flowers and they would just sell to the public so I live in an area where there's a flower farm just uh a couple hundred meters up the road. Um, how much? 67. 76. 76. Um, but uh, yeah, so I could go to this wholesaler and buy the flowers straight from them. And for the recent cake that I made for my grandma, I was using flowers and I'm going, yeah, you know, I'll go to the same place. You know, they're really nice and were very helpful. So we'll, um, we'll go with them again. And I rock up and they turned around and said, uh, unfortunately, we only sell to businesses now. So if you have a, an ABN or Australian business number, um, if you don't have one of them, we can't sell to you. And it's just like, why? Like, come on. <laughs> but not all was lost. I was able to find a, um, a uh, florist in 
in my town actually, which was that were actually very helpful. So I didn't have a specific flower that I wanted. Uh, it was just like, you know what, I want something these colours or something around like this design. And then yeah, it's like, you know what? This is this is the colours you want, this is what the kind of design you want. Leave it with us and uh, we'll get an arrangement of flowers for you. And yeah, we'll have that ready for you the I think it was the day before that I would need to have the cake ready. And yeah, I rocked up and they've got all the all the flowers in and they're going, yep, we've sprayed them up for you as well, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it's like if you want some more, we've got some more at the back, and we'll just do that. I think they gave me a um a uh, a branch of baby breath flowers. It's like these are about to go bad, you're gonna have to free. It's like, are you serious? What? <laughs> Those are awesome. Uh now, how much what source can we want to put this in? Tiny? Put them in a tiny one. Put in a small one here, because yeah, we wanna not the butter. Uh, Tissues are reactivated at the moment. Um, stove camera on. Activating stove camera. Okay. Go with the small burner. So I want to go the big burner for the other one. Uh, now, yeah. quiet. <laughs> uh, my opinion is only based on my own preference. Uh, I don't want to eat sugar flowers. The real flowers are pretty on their own. That is, yeah. The, sh the, the sugar flowers, they don't really taste that great. <laughs> they definitely don't taste that great, but... Um, I I don't think I've ever... I don't think I've ever made a cake with the sugar flowers on there that people have actually eaten the whole flower. So there's that one person at the party that just goes, I'm a little bit curious, what does this taste like? And they'll have a little bit of it's like, oh, okay, that's pretty nice. But for the most part, nobody eats them. So it's just... If something's, I think it's more so if something's out of season. Um, so if there's a flower that you want that's out of season, well, I'll know how to make it. So we just just make it straight away. Um, for me, I would, I would always try, like not try, but have that little that card up my sleeve with that feather in my cap, where you know I could, I want to make a bouquet of flowers for somebody. I can make them the flowers and go. You don't have to put them in water. They're going to last a while. And that's how that's my feelings towards you. My feelings don't, my feelings won't wilt over a week. <laughs> <How do you stand? laughs> oh man, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> uh, it's cool that it's edible, but uh, if it won't get eaten, then why does it need to be edible? That is true, that is true. You could use um, uh, gum paste. Well, not well. Uh, gum paste is edible, but you could use a pa like a clay paste or something to make the flowers as well. But you're 100 percent right. If it if it doesn't need to be eaten, then why make it edible? <laughs> My feelings dissolve in water, though. Oh no. Uh, where's my cup? I used my cup over here. So mm, it's gonna be like that, is it? My cup is too big. I really should have. Uh, I went to the trouble of figuring out the... Yeah, my, my, my sugar's lumpy today. It's okay. Um, I went to the trouble of... Uh, weighing, not weighing, but calculating the weight of the flour to the cups. I should have just done it for the rest of the stuff. But, I mean, let, let me be honest. As much as I poo-poo and naysay the freedom measurements of cups and teaspoons and stuff, it's just easy. I got a, I got a cup... Just put it in there and bam, we're done. Is that how to do that? <laughs> I see the simplicity behind cups and spoons. Do I like it? No. <laughs> do, do I like do I like not having to clean up so much dishes? Yes. We want a cup of the corn syrup. Oh, lots of corn syrup. Double check that I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I always worry when I see this, like, that's a lot of corn syrup. Can't be white corn syrup. <laughs> Morocco. <laughs> Extra in there, why not? I have to mix the eggs in there too. Corn syrup's so messy. So is honey. And treacle. And molasses. Mm. Gotta measure corn syrup with a cup, I guess. Mm. I'm gonna measure everything with a cup. Two eggs. Yeah. 
So I'm gonna mix, I know it's probably not gonna be the right thing to do, but I'm gonna mix it all into the one bowl. Put the eggs in there as well. Cause this is, yeah, combine the, the sugar, corn syrup, eggs, vanilla, and pecans. I didn't uh, cut up some pecans. Here, a cup and a half of pecans. Have you ever made Italian buttercream with meringue powder? Uh, I feel disinclined to use egg white because of the money. Can't say that I have actually. Yeah, I can't say that I've made um, the buttercream with meringue powder. Um, but I can understand where you come from with the, the egg whites. My problem is I'm not too uh, I'm not too concerned about having to use the egg whites because of the cost. Is what am I doing with the egg yolks? Like I, I never never find anything proper to do with the egg yolks. I think I'll try it because Morny. Mm. But the meringue powder, not only that, I have to go to specialty stores for meringue powder. That's probably why I haven't really done it that way either. Most of the time when I make buttercream anyway, it's just butter, sugar, milk. Probably I should look into doing the uh, the Italian style buttercream. Sounds good. Uh, okay, what was it? Uh, it's off of my local grocery. So we have something that's close to meringue powder. I actually still have it. It's called Pab Magic. And it's supposed to be used for pavlovas. But, well, yeah. That's about... Ooh. Yeah, that's about enough. So I think that's the closest thing that I can get to uh, meringue mix, which is Pab Magic. But, um... Hmm. Uh... I can just add to my regular order at five dollars. It's non-perishable. That's another good thing too. Shelf life is definitely a good, um, good selling point. If you sell me something that's going to last for a very long time in my cupboard, so I forget a lot of stuff. I forget a lot of stuff. I had tomatoes from last week's stream, and I forgot about them on my bench, and they went bad. It's like, oh man, I got to use them for a sandwich. And not, not only that, I've got I've got stuff in my cupboard that I've used for um, some of the streams I made it earlier this year. And it's like, mm. we're actually going to have a, uh, a fancy dancy stream at the end of the year, or the day before the New Year's Eve, where I'm going to go through my cupboard and start using up all my ingredients, because that's going to be fun. <laughs> going to buy a whole bunch of ingredients that are basic necessities, so like milk, eggs, sugar, flour. And yeah, I'm just going to sit there and go, all right, we can make this out of this and that and that, and we're just going to make a whole bunch of stuff. I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's 30, egg 30 eggs is $10. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that does sound a lot more cost effective. Five bucks for, a, which is essentially dehydrated egg whites. But would you say that using the the fresh egg whites gives a different taste as opposed to powdered because there's always that debate of like fresh or frozen or fresh or dried like there's going to be a little bit of a taste difference do you reckon there's going to be a bit more of a like a better taste to using fresh egg whites as opposed to powdered um, let you know how it goes next week oh you're trying it next week oh nice if i'm able to catch it i'll try try pop in obviously I'm not sure, honestly, I, uh, I do taste the egg whites. I, I, do I taste the egg whites and buttercream? Not really. That is a good point. That is actually a very good point. Like, um, I would even say, like, for buttercream, I don't really taste the butter. It's just sugar. <laughs> All I'm tasting is just sugar and vanilla or whatever else. Um, uh, whatever flavoring they put in there. So if they put a a lemon flavor in there it's going to be overly lemonish if they put a peppermint flavor it's going to be overly peppermint i'm not tasting the butter or much there. but i'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of italians out there that are going to be giving you the old yeah you gotta use the fresh you gotta use the fresh egg white it doesn't taste the same no you gotta do that you gotta use the batter still. you gotta use the fresh it's gotta be the fresh <laughs> uh, eggs. <laughs> Why don't I put the fresh? No. <laughs> the hand. Yes, yeah, so you gotta, you gotta do. 
Mama's gonna be mad at you. <laughs> uh, so. Sugar, corn syrup, eggs, vanilla, and pecans. So yeah, I'm just gonna throw them all in here, mix them together. Back there. there. I'm gonna use the spoon that I've washed and put under my tea towel here. Uh, the pad magic comes in an egg-shaped container. Yes. <laughs> it's adorable. And I think I only need like a tablespoon for what we were using last. What did, what did we use the... Oh, now, now it's going to do my head in. I'm trying to think of what we were using the, um, the pad magic for. It wasn't pads, because I'd use fresh for that. Should I have used a whisk? Probably. Did I get the job done? Hell yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I'd love to make another PAV next year, but I, the problem I have with PAV is I can't get my oven um, cold enough. And Baker! Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Baker. I did not. <laughs> uh, now we're going to add the pecans. How are we doing today? I hope we're doing well. We're just currently making the filling for our pick and pie cheesecakes. And talking about uh, using powdered egg whites for uh, buttercream. I just like cake stuff in general, to be honest. The, the eth ethnics, the... I'm trying to think of the word for it. The, the ethics. There we go. It was close. It was close to that. The ethics of um, using sugar flowers as opposed to fresh flowers and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. I'm not sure I understand dry meringues. Feels, uh, feels a bit like styrofoam. Yeah. I'm trying to think of it pretty much is. It is. It's, it's just like styrofoam, but there's, there, I don't know, for me, it's, it's something nostalgic about it. There's something nostalgic about going to the bakery and getting a little a little swirl of meringues. Sweet styrofoam, yes. Um, but pavs, on the other hand, pavs, pavs are different. So pavs is pretty much, it's like a crispy uh, marshmallow. It's the best way I can describe it. Crispy marshmallow, and that's good stuff. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to put this onto the stove now. So we're going to add it to our butter mixture. And we're going to cook this for just 10 minutes. Then we're, but well, pretty much bring it to a boil. Bring it to a boil. I'm going to let it simmer until it sort of uh, reduces down. Titch. Oven camera on. Activating oven camera. I don't actually have it on the oven, but I do this so I can look at you guys and say, hey, how you doing? Um, and not have to be doing the double, double back. Maybe smack my face with the, uh, the Christmas hat. I also need a chat thing around here as well, so I can see you guys. But, uh, mix this all together. So we're also going to be constantly mixing this as well, to ensure that it doesn't burn the bottom. This over here. But, uh, so uh, I just made some cookies for a for a cookie get together. The apartment is having. Ooh, hope every, hope everyone's having a great day. I'm having a great day to be honest. I'm having a great day. The end of the year is winding winding up. Things are starting to go okay outside of stream. I'm in somewhat of a better mood than I have been in a while, and making cheesecake is always fun. Not only that, hanging out with you guys always always brightens my brightens my Friday. Well, I can't really say bright's my Friday. The sun does that when I wake up. <laughs> you guys make the day, make me know that the day is going to be a good day. How's that? <laughs> uh, well, a pavlova typically has some sort of fruit curd or accompanying, right? I've only ever seen on the bake off. So it depends on what you, uh, it depends on how you want to decorate. So a traditional pav, so. I make pavs, when I say make pavs, I decorate pavs at work. We get them brought in and I decorate it. So I put fresh cream on the top, I put segmented strawberries, kiwis, and passion fruit uh, like puree over the top. 
but it's not limited to that. So you can put uh, flaked chocolate, you can put peppermint crisp, you could put uh, violet crumble, you could put uh, crunchy, you could put cherry ripes on there, you could put um, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, uh, oranges, you could put oranges on there. Like it's pretty much, it's a very customizable, it's a customizable dessert and that's why I love pavlova so much. No two pads are the same. You could use Bailey's whipped cream for the whipped cream on the top. You could put a drizzle of Bailey's in there. You could make a Bailey's cream sauce and put that over there. Why am I talking about Bailey's? I like Bailey's, okay? <laughs> Mimi, sorry I'm late, but I'm here. Meowdy, hope you're all doing well, having fun. We are having fun, and you are definitely not late. You are here at the perfect time. The only time that you're late is when it says, thank you for stopping by. That's the only time you're late. Uh, oh good, I do have, um, I have plenty of pecans. We're currently just making the filling for the um, the cheesecakes at the moment, so it's good to hear things are shaping up somewhat, somewhat. They're shaping up for me, not for the business itself. Um, as I say most of the time, I don't really like talking too much about work on stream, but uh, that might change at the end of the year. I might have a little bit of a rant to let you all know what's going on, but for the most part, yeah, when I talk about work, it's usually, Ugh, and I don't want to have that vibe. I don't like having that vibe. Excuse me. Um, but yeah. Don't blame me on bit, yeah. I would love, like, without going too much into detail with it, I don't hate what I do. I actually quite like what I do. Um, being a, I'm not actually a qualified baker, but I work as a baker for a supermarket franchise. Uh, I'm a qualified pastry cook. So I like baking. But I don't like the company I'm doing it for, and reasons. <laughs> you gotta work all day and live it. No need to constantly relive it at home. Exactly, exactly like that. Exactly. Um, because that's almost similar to what some of my, what one of my friends said. Uh, you spend you spend a good part of your life at work. Uh, so you can't really get it down, get, let it get you down too much, or go stretch out too much. Like, yeah. It is what it is. I don't really have too much control of it. Go in, do my job, go home, and then spend most of my uh, energy doing stuff like this, hanging out and doing stuff that I actually want to, I actually enjoy doing. Not that as, as I said, not that I don't enjoy what I do. It is what it is. <laughs> but yes, I'm starting to get a little bit of boil on there. Can we? Okay. I really need a setup. Well, when I say set up, I need to have a different layout for my cameras soon. I've been rocking this for a while now, it's like, hmm, this is really the best setup. <laughs> Anxious to see how the pecan pie cheesecake turns out. Uh, never put two flavour combos together, but it sounds delicious. It looks delicious. So, using the command explanation recipe will take you to the recipe that Ponomance and Mimi has provided for me. Um, the thing I'm concerned about is the, not only the baking method, but the cool down before we can actually finish it off. Now, when I say I'm concerned about the baking method, I've done cheesecakes like this in the past where you put it in a bath of uh, water into the oven and it comes, it rises up and does a really good job of you know, being a nice wobbly cheesecake, but then it usually deflates afterwards. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong there. Um, it's not really something I'm proficient at either. Like I'm used to the set style cheesecake, so heat up some gelatin, put that into the cheesecake mix, mix it up real well, set it, or pour it, set it, done. You're all good. I like that cheesecake the most. Um, but, yeah. Oh, can have a little bit more of a mix. Because, uh, so what we're doing here, so... Uh, reduce to a simmer and uh yeah so we bring to the boil, then we reduce to a simmer until it thickens during constant yep and we're gonna pour that filling into the mm -mm. Uh, i made it for hubby's birthday and it was amazing yeah and then then mimi came over to my channel and so then thought you know what i've got some i've got some spare points i'm gonna oh, throw a suggestion in there and here we are it's had to come up with multi-cam layouts it is it is. You have a really good setup yourself, Lennon. 
I really like your setup. Um, I've seen, I think Nish has a good one too, so Nish has a good setup. Um, I'm trying to think of some other, other ones. But yeah, it definitely is a, it's a, it's a hard one. Like for me, when I've got this, whoop, this camera here, when I go over here to grab ingredients, uh, my head's gone. <laughs> but I mean, I've got this camera here, but this camera turns from that camera to oven camera, to that camera, to oven camera. <laughs> I'm always in awe of how you and fellow streamers set up their layouts and make it look nice and professional. Ooh. Yeah, Lemons is very professional. Like, you've got all the nice borders and stuff, but obviously, I think you've been doing it a bit longer than I have, but. <laughs> I actually skipped the water bar, but I also used a premix pie crust instead of spring form. Ah, okay. If you're in a pinch, and uh, if you're ever in a, in a pinch for, with a spring form, not fun. Yeah, so we actually bought uh, some, we bought some special ones today. So I got tiny ones. <laughs> I got little 12, 12 centimeter ones. That's going to, um, whoop, go a little bit spill for that. And that's frothing up nice and, yeah, so we're gonna drop that down to a simmer. Uh, I stole the layout from a stream I watched uh, that is a, that is a couple. They have two small cams for their smash, uh, for their faces and uh, and two large for their for their game. Ah, okay. I mean, if it works, if it works, and it definitely does. I mean, that's, that's a bit adorable too, having having a couple's cam. <laughs> Panamancer Mimi has requested you hydrate. Yeah, that I can do. Cheers, Mimi. Mm. Like the tiny ones, yes. So I have a, so obviously I work in a shopping complex and we had a shop uh, down down the way from where I work that closed down. It used to be like a variety $2 shop or a dollar store, a dollar tree store, um, best way to describe it. And they they um, they closed up because business wasn't that great, so they closed up. Recently, a pop-up home kitchenware store has moved in and they're doing a big uh, big sale for all of their kitchenware so knives glasses pans uh like anything you can think of for the kitchen it's it's a home economics sort of shop and uh they popped in with huge sales and i saw these and i'm going oh these are about i think they're about 16 bucks a pop i was like mm. For doing it for the stream today, I probably should pick them up because it's going to be nice and neat, easy and simple. And I get to the register and they're all like half price off, so I got picked them up for like 30 bucks. Incredible light. It's like, nice! Thank you! <laughs> uh, my, design, uh, my layout design is just me plus Photoshop plus time. Yeah. Yeah. I need the, I need the motivation. <laughs> I feel like I've got, I've got the me, I've got the Photoshop, and I've got the time, but I need the motivation. <laughs> And also, I think that what I work, what I rock works as well. And there's other things I want to try and invest in soon as well. But still, honestly, Photoshop is half the battle. Very legal, 100% version. Yes, yes, yes. I think I, I think I've got that same version as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> dealing with the same shop. And Tech, how are we doing today? I hope we're doing well. Uh, hope you're doing well. I'm doing quite well. 110% legal only for. For Cersei's. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> yes. We want to make sure we keep stirring this this filling mix because if we don't, then it's going to start burning on the sides and burning on the bottom. And I don't know about you, but uh, caramelized caramelized is a decent flavor, but burnt is another thing. Burnt is one of those flavors that can. Travel through whatever you're doing and ruin the whole lot, especially chocolate. You burn a little bit of chocolate, that's going right through that that thing. And you're not gonna have the nice, fun, bitter kind of chocolate, though, no, you're gonna have the bad bitter. Uh yeah, I hope I hope you're doing well, Tech. I hope you're doing well. Always hang on. Always score when bakewares yeah, always score when bakewares are sale. I because I went to this same the same uh franchise had one in a bigger complex about 40 minutes down the road and I think I picked up the cannoli shells I picked them up for dirt cheap absolutely dirt cheap 
Um, I think it was like a buy one, get one free, but they were still half price. So I think I spent like six bucks on eight cannoli shells or cannoli flutes. Like, yes. And the guy turned around and said, oh, you got to come back and, make, and, uh, and give some cannolis when you're done. And it's like, see this how you're closing up shop if you're here. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not come back and give him the cannolis because they were mine. <laughs> and honestly, as much as uh, I was happy of how they looked when they turned out, I wasn't too pleased of the shells. The shells turned out to be more of a, like a hard biscuit base than what I'm used to. I'm used to like a uh, flaky, crispy bakery. Or, 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 but not bakery, pastry, pastry biscuit. So, might be something I'll revisit in the future. So, uh, I made very basic sketches in PowerPoint to figure out things, or I browse layouts on Etsy to see what I like. See now that that's smart. You turn around and you say you've got. It sounds like you've had the two brain cells before, and you let you just you just let me borrow the boat. Like that's that's a smart thing. It makes me remind me of something I saw in a, in a movie, and I'll get onto that in a second. But yeah, sketching it out is definitely a good idea. I never do that. <laughs> I never do that. I just sort of have it in my head and just... Just... On, on the keyboard and things sometimes work out. <laughs> uh, we just had the event. I'm supposed to be going to the wake, but... But Malia just couldn't. Um, definitely understandable. Definitely, definitely understandable. Doing burnt butter and st and, sta and sage stable cookies. Ooh, burnt, burnt butter. So... Burnt butter, is that sort of close to, like, caramelized butter, in a sense? Uh, that's, that's what I'm saying, like, you're caramelizing the butter. It, it, look, it is burnt, burnt butter, but when I hear burnt butter as well, I think, it's, all right, you just, you just overcook the mix. <laughs> you go, on stop, stop. Uh, here next, one of the few burnt, that is acceptable, yeah. Caramel, caramelized and caramel itself is the acceptable burnt. Char grilled is another acceptable. Another acceptable. So char grilled peppers, char grilled pizza, uh, those are the other acceptable burnts. When you've got even burnt meringues, this is the story I want to talk about. <laughs> I'll talk. I'll quickly talk about the thing. When you talked about the sketching uh, lemon, it reminded me of the movie The Founder, uh, which is the story of about how the owner. And the CEO of McDonald's got to the power of where he was. And it was underhanded, really nasty stuff. He, he cut the original owner's way out of their business. But he went and found out how these guys were able to make their, um, their restaurant so efficient so fast. Because every other diner that this guy went to, he'd be waiting, say, like 10, 20 minutes for his burger. But he went to this little one, the McDonald's at the time, and he got his burger in like five minutes. And he was astounded by it, and he somewhat weasels his way into the business, and then took over, and then it became what it is today. But yeah, mate. <laughs> um, not sure if you can hear the uh, the car out there, but still. Uh, but the way that they were able to get the place so efficient is they took all the employees out one day to a basketball court, and they drew out the layout of their kitchen onto the basketball court with chalk. And then they would draw out, you know, this is where the fry is going to be. This is where the um, uh, the burger press is going to be. This is where the assembly part is going to be. And they would reenact what they would do from day to day. And they would go, no, nah, we're going to conflict. Like, if we have this over here, that over there, we're going to conflict. And these two people are going to get in the way. So we'll have to lay it out. And it was just a very neat way of... Like, it was... How do I put it? I was just really amazed by that. And this was like back in the, what, the 40s and 50s? Like, this is, this is cool. And by you saying sketching it out, that's, that just sort of reminded me of that. <laughs> it's a good film. The Founder. You should check it out. <laughs> ah, so this is getting nice and, nice and colorized and thick as well. We're getting there, we're getting there. Sorry, I think I missed some stuff too. Let me just learn in the good, the good ideas. Yeah, just, just learn in them, learn in them. She's going to come back eventually. Like, remember that good idea I gave you? Yeah, 5%. <laughs> 5%. <laughs> just because it's you. Just because it's you. 10%. <laughs> um, I don't really have artistic vision, so I need to take other people's ideas. Well, you, hmm, I wouldn't say you take them. You sort of... You're inspired by them. You're inspired by their artistic vision, and then you... Interpreted in your own, uh, in your own way, exactly. And then you put your own spin on it. Hmm. 
that people would call it browned butter, but every recipe calls it burnt butter. Yeah, because I think it's that, that little, ooh, you sneakily burnt the butter and you put it in the thing. Oh, but it still tastes good. It's still good. <laughs> and probably the, uh, the first person who did it accidentally burnt the butter and still used it because they didn't have any extra butter at the time. It's like, these are burnt butter and, uh, and, <laughs> and sage sablé cookies. I said stable. I know I said stable, but it's sublets. I've been able to watch it. Interesting story. It, it, it actually is. I watched it on the airplane flight when I went to Japan the first time. It was like, well, I've heard about this from a co-worker, so I'm gonna give it a try. Give it a look. Hmm. Thick, thick with a capital. Damn! <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm famous for giving out good ideas. I'm a producer of many streams. Ooh. I'd be getting paid for this. <laughs> Nishin, Nishin is cursed kitchen because... Oh, oh, is that so? You're the one who suggested it. I was actually... I was surprised about... Well, not say surprised. I... I try to pop by, by Nishin every time. Every time I can. Sometimes I'm doing my own stream now or I've got work or, you know, all that kind of you know, time... time stuff. And... But I'm in his Discord and I noticed that his Discord changed to cur cursed kitchen. It's like, oh... Is this because he likes to go down that route of, you know, doing things a little bit, a little bit, um, uh, down the yabe style of, of cooking? <laughs> I have a recipe that I want to suggest to him, but I'm going to suggest it after next week for obvious reasons. Some people might know what's going on, some people might not, and I'm going to explain that at the end of the stream. But if you got to take, got to take Kupo out? No problem, no problem. Take your time, take your time. It's all good. Uh, so. I might actually turn this up a little bit more just so we can get this it's thickening up and it's coloring up really nice but i just want it to be a little bit quicker mumble mumble um so how are our things doing here too so here are our bases oh yeah they uh they turn out really nice I like the look, of, I think I said it before, I really like the look of this one because it's got that really rustic, um, crispy edge on the top. But the other ones are really nice and neat and uniform. So. Hmm. Bridges making sounds. I think I had it on less than a simmer before, so that's why we were sort of. It was taking its time. Let me get my mixer ready to go. Are going to be so yeah. Pour the filling and spread even. And I'm gonna, I think we're going to put that maybe back in the freezer to let it set quicker. Um, then we're going to beat the cream cheese, the sugar into light and fluffy. Add the salt and flour. Uh, then by hand, gently stir the vanilla and one egg at a time. I might still leave it in the mixer, but just put it on a slow mix. Uh, to fully combined, mix in the sour cream until smooth. I'm going to pour the cheesecake. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. <sighs> JST, welcome in. How are we doing today? A book. I might put these back in the freezer just for a quick bit. For a quick tidbit. I hope we're doing well, JST. Tick. I'm thinking this is supposed to turn into like a gelatinous finish, but sort of not really. I don't know. Once, once we let it. Sit, so Mimi, Mimi, how how did you how did your filling finish? Was it a like a gelatin style finish, or was it like a ooze? Like when you cut it, did it just sort of ooze everywhere? Uh, this reminds me of some tart dough I should bring out of the freezer and use up today. Oh, I was gonna say egg tarts, but egg tarts are best with filo pastry. Philo, Philo, Philo. I say Philo. But, um, just trying to think of what other ones you could do. Like, you, you, you could do custard tarts, you could do fruit flans, um, uh, lemon meringue pie. Alright, gooey. So, I'm going to say that that is. That's done, so I'll let that. Watch this. This is why I bought a second Pyrex. <laughs> what is that? Pecan? Is it a nut? It is. Oh, Here comes the boy! Hello, boy! Got me again. Welcome! Here he comes! There he is! Here comes the boy! 
You got me again because that's usually what Ember plays. So I thought Ember came back. It's like, oh, Ember's back! But no, it's. Ethan. It's just. That's okay. <laughs> uh, here comes the boy. Uh, is it flaky butter pastry made? You know, is, is this flaky butter pastry made with this card? The Philo? Yes. So the Philo is like a really thin pastry. Um, once it's baked, it's like really crispy and crumbly. You use it for, you can use it for baklava, you can use it for, um, oh, what's some other ones? I don't know what it's actually called, but we used to have one called, like when I was doing my apprenticeship, we used to have a product that we called like a, it was like a cherry custard bird's nest, we call it. And it was like, you grab a sheet of filo pastry. Let me sit this aside for a second so I can explain it with my hand. So you'd sit this filo pastry out, one sheet, then you'd scrunch it, and then you'd swirl it. And you had this little swirl of um, filo pastry. And you'd bake that, and then you'd drown it in syrup, sugar syrup. And then once that was done, you'd take that, put it onto a cupcake liner, then you'd pipe a bit of continental custard, a bit of cream, a couple of um, drained pitted cherries, and then flan gel over the top, flaked almonds around the side. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. When's the Christmas themed bakes coming? Uh, well, I mean, biddy. Thank you for the biddy. This is very much appreciated. We've got a Christmas theme. When I say Christmas themed baking stream, we've got a Christmas themed baking stream the weekend before Christmas. Uh, it's just going to be gingerbread. I'm going to just make a whole bunch of gingerbread, make it look as you know, people. I've got my Pokemon cookie cutters I might do. Um, I would say that this is somewhat Christmas themed. Everything we're doing at the moment is semi-Christmas themed. Uh, if this turn, when, uh, I don't want to say if this turns out, when this turns out amazing, uh, this might be a cheesecake I'd take to a um, family party, like a family get together. Like, hey guys, 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 I know we like the Bailey cheesecake a lot, but pecan pie cheesecake. <laughs> uh, did you do candy canes? I did do candy canes last year. And, uh, what happened with the candy canes? I think I ate them. Either ate them or they just sort of remelted or reconstituted into a uh, big blob. And I'm probably going to have a bunch of this filling left over. Yeah, because that's what I want to do here. I want to want to fill it up just enough. Because we're gonna put we're gonna put some cheesecake in here. <laughs> Should make a Yule log. I have everything. I want to say, unfortunately, I have everything set and ready for like schedule wise for this Christmas. Um, so we've got something. We've obviously got some plans for this week. We're doing cheesecakes. We've got some plans for next week, which I will explain a little bit more later in the stream. And then the who knows, not. Something I'm going to say, no, I don't want to make the Yule Cake. It's just, we might have to save that for either next year or a bit later. <gasps> Thank you for the pretties. Yeah, that's a lot That's a lot of filling left over. That's a lot of filling. Could have halved that, actually. But that's fine. That's fine. We'll be able to use that for something else. I could, could just as well do the same thing as what Mimi said. And after today, I could flash up the street, grab some tart shells, and just make some pretty, some, um, drink it. <laughs> I'm trying to cut... As, as funny as it sounds, and as weird as it sounds, I'm trying to cut back on a lot of sugar at the moment. That's why I actually didn't have any um, adult sodas last night. Usually I have adult sodas on Thursdays while I play my games, but this uh, this week it's like, you know what, we're going to cut that back until the end of the year. And then next year I'm going to start cutting that right back because, well, <laughs> I'm finding myself drinking, drinking a 10 pack of Jim Beams uh, every week. Not that good. <laughs> adult sodas, that's a new one. Well. It's either a hard soda, an adult soda, or just alcohol in general. Let's uh, let's get some cream cheese and stuff going. So what do I need? Cream cheese, sugar, salt, flour, vanilla extract, the eggs, and the sour cream. Okay. So let's weigh up my cream cheese. We need 16 ounces. Uh, so cider. Uh, it's pretty much just like uh, whiskey and coke, or bourbon and coke, if you will. Um, we are not using that one. <laughs> I'm not even going to show that on camera. 
It said it, it says it's still good until June of next year. That was green. <laughs> what the crud? <laughs> Ew! <laughs> yes! Oh god! <laughs> uh, like hard cider, mix a green apple, angry orchid, and some fireball. Heck yes. So funny enough, I actually can't have cider. I actually can't have cider. And uh, some lemon uh, pub squashes or lemon squash. It's a weird thing. I don't know why it happens, but uh, I get extremely bad headaches from it. Extremely bad. The last time I had, I wouldn't say enough cider to get me. Now I know it's like, oh, it's what people usually get. It's called a hangover TC. Um, it's like, no, 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 no. This is. Even if I've had two ciders, so I had, I was up in Queensland for, uh, for some holidays, and I had a few ciders because you know it's it's nice warm weather. We'll have some cider, and uh, I only had, I want to say I only had about like six over the course of the day. So we're talking fourteen to sixteen hours, and six drinks, and I woke up in the middle of the night with the worst headache. To the point of I'm thinking I used to I have painkillers back at home, back in Victoria, for when I had my uh, my wisdom teeth pulled out. I wish I had them now. Like, it is it is really bad. But yeah, it's it's not it's not just limited to cider as well. So like I said, pub squash. I can't have pub squash. Uh, I can't have some ginger beer. But some ginger beer will give me the same effect. But I'm not sure of, like what's in there that's causing me to have such allergic painful reactions, but it's dumb and I hate it. So I like ginger beer. I really like ginger beer. It's nice. Okay, so we're going to have a lot of cheesecake filling left over as well from this. <laughs> Ooh, just going to soften that while we weigh the other stuff up. Uh, my head don't feel so good. I drank too much. That's the thing, it's not when I drank too much, it's just when I've had some. I don't know if it's like a, an additive they put in there, or if it's I'm allergic to some form of um, acidic acid that's in there, I'm just not sure. There's a non-alcoholic non beer that doesn't get you drunk, but still gives you a buzz. That sounds weird. That really does sound weird. What's it? So my point when it comes to non-alcoholic beer is, I drink it because of the alcoholic content. Why would I want to drink Moldy yeast, moldy yeast water. Like, <laughs> why would I want to drink that just because? Like, give give me the incentive of I'm going to feel a little bit funny afterwards, please. <laughs> when you have to buy non-alcoholic beer just to be a part of the boys and to be a part of the lads, uh, that's a problem with the people you're with. <laughs> But I mean, look, some people like the taste of beer and they don't want to get drunk out of it, so there's that too, but... I wouldn't say that I like the taste of beer or I hate the taste of beer, it's just situational. So, I I will have a beer after I do some yard work, so if I, like, cut the grass or dig a hole or build a fence or anything along those lines, I will I'll have a beer afterwards. Um, if we're having a barbecue, I'll have a beer. But I'm not, going, I'm not going out of my way to grab a beer and get drunk off beer because it's it'll get, that gives me bad headaches because of hangover <laughs> I don't know I prefer the taste of like fruity cocktails as well but you know what I want to have fun getting silly and I want it to taste good <laughs> but usually alcohol free beer doesn't taste the same or at least it did when I was uh, was a young buck and still drinking mm. Celebratory beer. It's pretty much it. It pretty much is. Uh, I've never actually had any non-alcoholic beer, and it's not that I'm. I don't want to say prejudiced in the sense of like you know, beer, 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 beer. beer. It's just not something I'm interested in. Like maybe when I was a bit younger and like a lot younger, and I wanted to have that shock value of like, oh, TC's got a beer. He's only seventeen. Maybe. Been saying that when I was 17, I was still drinking anyway, so. <laughs> Kaluru and Coke. Kaluru and Coke. Okay. Might fix myself up one this evening. 
Ooh. Now that's an interesting combo. That's definitely an interesting combo of um of flavors. Coffee and Coke. Hmm. I know that Malibu and Coke is a thing, and that's got a that's a got a very um distinct flavor combination. I don't know. Whenever I have Kahlua, or I don't really have Kahlua that much because I'm not a big coffee fan either. But um, if I have Kahlua or Malibu or those ones there, I usually try and mix it with a um like a milk-based drink. So, like, Malibu, uh, creme de cacao, Baileys, with some thickened cream and some milk, get yourself a really nice coconut, choc coconut, um, uh, yeah, like a choc, choc, choc coconut milkshake, and get drunk off that, and that's some good stuff. Alcohol free beer reminds me of Impossible Burger. <laughs> Neither I really want to touch. Impossible Burger is good though. So we have we have Impossible Burger patties at my work. And I picked one of them up and cooked it. And it was surprisingly good. It was surprisingly really, really good. Um The only the only thing I'll have is when you cook up an impossible burger, it does stink a little. Like, you, it does have, like, a little bit of a weird smell when you cook it up. But the taste is almost the same. Like if you if you went into it without knowing it's an Impossible Burger, you would swear that it's still meat. Like, you might still have that question, it's like, there's something a little bit different about this meat. Maybe they put a different spice in there or something. But it's it's fine. It's it's still good. It's good stuff. It really is. <laughs> uh, they have they have coffee cokes, uh, you know, and they are old, but not not bad. Uh, why not coffee, rum, and coke? I think the rum is a bit excessive. But that's just that's just my thought. That's just my thought. And hi, Nicole. Are hey, you having a good old look? Uh, so what we're we doing? So we got the soft and cream cheese. Uh, bit of cream cheese and the sugar. So we need a cup of sugar. Cup of sugar. Cup of sugar. It says to use granulated sugar, I'm using caster sugar because I am a pompous git. And whenever I'm doing stuff that's baking wise, I prefer to use caster sugar because it is... Like, I'm not going to worry too much about the crystallization or the... Uh, all that kind of stuff. Like, when I say crystallization, I know I've got lumps in there, you can see the lumps, but... Once it beats in and all that kind of stuff, it's going to be very smooth. It's going to dissolve a little bit better in my mind. When it says to use it in certain other things though, so when we're making toffee or caramel, uh, I will use granulated sugar. Um, but for this kind of stuff here, yeah, I'll just use caster. Uh, everyone has a preference, that's all good. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying, look, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just something, it's more so the Kahlua part. Because I'm not a big fan of Kahlua. Well, what do I say Kahlua? I'm not a big fan of coffee. So, funny enough, like, for the hours that I work and what I do, I have not touched coffee. I've had somebody make me a coffee once, and I drank it, and I hated it. Iced coffee is different. But yeah, I'm just, just not a big coffee fan. Just not a, not a big coffee fan. Cookie dough needs to hurry and taste a little... Hang on. The cookie dough needs to hurry. It's tasting a little self up and chilly, so I can make, much cook, make my coffees nanny. Needs to hurry up. Ne oh, right. Needs to hurry up. It's tasty. Right. I read the sentence, and it was just... It... You ever see those uh, interviews? Now, by a satellite delay, we have TC on the front lines of, of, of this interview. And it's like... Yes, Brad, I'm on the front lines here, reporting about... It's pretty much what my brain did right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. So the cookie dough needs to hurry. It's tasted all so far and chill because I want my, my, so I can make my cookies. So it needs to hurry up, is what you're saying. String of words, not. <laughs> nah, it's all good. It's all good. It's just me being an idiot. Uh, I'm the opposite. I would drink coffee all day if it did not dehydrate you. Yeah. I know a few people like that. It's, uh, it's, it gets. Almost becomes a dependency. It's like I need my coffee. Don't talk to me till I have my coffee. Thanks. Leave me alone. And then when they have their coffee, they're still just like, oh, I'm so tired. 
I need another coffee. I'm okay with... Hey, if I would say like cappuccinos and stuff on a rare occasion. Like, I'm gonna go out and have a... Have some brunch with the family or... With somebody. Um, I could consider starting to drink coffee there, but... <laughs> you like the rear view keep it creeper cam? Oh. <laughs> Well, I can actually turn that off for now because I had that on because when I was over at the stove here I could sort of be like, hey, how you doing? And make sure I'm looking at everybody at the, at the time, but uh, I don't need that on the moment, so... Hang on, we need to... Hitch. Oven camera off. Deactivating oven camera. There we go, we can turn that off now. <laughs> it's your favourite curse. <laughs> uh, it's not... Hang on, it's not a caffeine addiction. I'm super sensitive to it. I just look, yeah. So it's, it's not, yeah, it's not a caffeine addiction. It's a coffee addiction. It's it's the coffee that you're addicted to, not the caffeine. In it. It's just the coffee. Someone gave you a pure shot of caffeine. You're like, oh, get this stuff away from me. Give me the coffee. Give me the coffee. Uh, right. So, uh, to line floppy, add the salt, the flour. I oh, didn't, and then add the salt and the flour. Uh, why didn't I pull the flour out? I'll tell you why, because I filled it up and then I didn't put it back. Oh, hey, let me get this way. There's my thing here. So we'll get the salt and the flour ready. So it was a quarter of a teaspoon and one and a half tablespoons. Why not put my spoons here? So a quarter of a teaspoon is a small one, and I'll just guesstimate. But, uh, I uh, started coffee in junior high and yeah, ruined myself. Can't go to work without it, but I also do just really love the taste of coffee. Yeah. I know there are those people out there that the are the the coffee aficionados or the snobs. You know, oh they'll they'll have a coffee and sit and sit in the cafe and just chill and relax. The one where you have to have it at the start of work, so like, mm, that's a lot of money. Unless you make it yourself, it's a lot of money to have a coffee addiction. <laughs> Uh, I didn't like coffee until my dad started getting good at roasting. Mm. And yeah, that, that's the other thing too. So if you have, like, you've got the the instant style roast or the instant style coffee and the uh, the actual roasting stuff, like, I know there's those people who have coffee because I need coffee to start. I need coffee to start today. But then they'll get a good roast or a good blend from a from a cafe or from a family member. It's like. This is, this is the stuff. This is the stuff. And then they can't go back to the... I don't know where I'm going with this, uh... This, uh... <laughs> this dilly. With this little rant. I would just say, like, each of their own. But coffee is expensive. Coffee is a, a, a very expensive, um... Addiction to have at the moment. I think they've worked it out. So, depending on... If you get a good... Like, if you don't go instant, you don't go, like, uh... Who is it? Nespresso or Nescafe or all that kind of crap. Um... And you get a proper roast from the proper uh, barista. It charges, it's up to about six bucks Australian per cup, I think. And then you do that every day, so you know you got six by seven, which is uh, forty-two. And then that by uh, we'll say four, which would be one hundred and sixty-six. Pretty sure that's what it is. So one hundred and sixty-six bucks a month just on coffee. It's like. You know, you could be spending that kind of money selling to some good people on Twitch. Much like some people in chat at the moment. <laughs> uh, uh, I, am, I am from a coffee snob state, so that is everywhere around here. Mm. <laughs> I believe mine is $20. So $20 USD or 340 grams. How long would that last you, though? So if, if that's for the um, for the ground roast blends, how long will that twenty US last you? If that's a if that's a month, that's already way less cheaper than um, where you would buy at the store. If you, that's over six months as well, that's even better. If I control myself, I can. If I can control myself, I can make it stretch two weeks maybe. Okay, so that is four dollars a month. That's still better. That's still better than going to the store and buying, or going to the, to the cafe and buying it, still. Uh, I can do that within a week. Okay, so then that is still half the price. 
it's expensive, but it's still less expensive than actually going, look, you're, you're paying for qualification, you're paying for somebody's time, you're paying for overheads and all that kind of stuff. I, I understand that, but uh, if, if you can make it good yourself at home, then why spend that kind of money at the store, at the, at the cafe? Okay, so, salt and flour. I'll mix that in there. Give that a scrape down as well. Uh, and then, yeah, by hand, then we're going to stir in the... Uh, how many eggs was it? It was three eggs. So another three eggs. Ooh, ooh, hang on. Wait, I need to do this. I need to quickly wash. I need to quickly wash some stuff. Hmm. So let's take. All right, we'll, I'll take something into account. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to uh, belittle or poo poo naysay people who have semi coffee addictions or really like coffee and saying, you know, "Oh, it costs you so much to have coffee." I can't talk. Like I said, I was buying a ten pack of uh, alcohol every week, which is arguably worse for more money. So I was spending uh, how much? I'm gonna say 40 to 40 to 60 bucks a week, just for a, just for 10 drinks that I would drink in three days. I am no saint in this matter, <laughs> so do not do not take for one second that I'm sitting here and say like, I am the superior one because I do not drink coffee. No, I have my other flights and my other demons that I have to face. <laughs> uh, and that's a good part. I just get my coffee from my coffee stand, which is also the roaster. Uh, so I'm uh, so I'm getting the same. Hang on, I'm getting the same either way. Main difference is one is espresso, and at home, hang on, and home is a pour over. Yes, I'm not sure what the, the main difference is. Like obviously the pour over is where you uh, so you got the the beans in in a filter, then you pour the the water over the filter, and the espresso. I'm not sure what the espresso is. Someone says, oh, yo, TC, you want a coffee? And it's like, uh, yeah, I guess I'm feeling a bit daring today. Oh, what kind of coffee do you want? Give me, give me the Big M style. Like, just give me a, give me an iced coffee. Give me a dare iced coffee. My place is all over the head at the moment. <laughs> all right, so we're going to crack a few eggs. I'm no clear coffee. I don't have all the fancy gadgets. But how how close are you? How close are you to uh, to having the uh, all the fancy gadgets? Because if you have a if you have an espresso or you, you got the the trip over, if you've got a milk frother, if you've uh... <laughs> it's funny. It's really funny to see people's setups. When I say it's funny to see people's setups, it's more on the side on the line of. Um, I, I find it a bit funny to see how big of the setup they've got and how close to being able to set up a roadside coffee stand it is. Like, <laughs> like you've got this big double roaster or d double drip over machine with a frother on the side. You've got the grind beans yourself. If you buy yourself a camper trailer, cut the side of it off, you can just put that in there and start selling coffee on the side of the road. <laughs> Get yourself a license. Yeah, make and bank, all right? Because everybody wants their coffee on the way to work. Uh, my milk frother got, uh, got, regu hang on. Oh, got regulated to egg whisker or whisking duty for life. Oh, nice. <laughs> or the whizzy frothy thing. Uh, that's my frother. Yeah, so you got the little, um, the hand whisker, but you can actually buy milk frothers that does like the heating and the frothing all in one. Uh, and then there's a, what am I thinking? Oh, not the, not the milk froth, it's the, um, the steamer. I think mum's got one. I think mum's got a big coffee machine. It like has the double drip and then it's got like a little steam thing on the side. It's like, I'm a steam on the coffee. I, I, <laughs> I don't know any, any of that stuff. Uh, so yeah, vanilla extract, which I've got over here, which is a tablespoon. Okay. Am I going to weigh it? No. What am I doing? Of course I'm going to weigh it. Vanilla extract. Vanilla extract is a guesstimation. I think it's been a long time since I've legitimately weighed up vanilla extract. 
and I'm just gonna get this uh see our cream smoothed off into this into this bowl here. Didn't say anything, Titch. <laughs> oh he's that cheeky little boy. Just feeling a bit lonely. Just feeling a bit lonely. He wants something to do. I understand. I understand. I want. If I was just sitting down, watching, like on the sidelines in my own kitchen, watching somebody else do something, it's like, mm -hmm. let me let me help you with that. <laughs> Vanilla equals measured by how you feel. Yeah. This is. I did a rough estimate just now. Mm, the old guesstimation. Now, I think I've said it before on stream. I'll I'll repeat myself to the chaos come home. When people turn around and say, I I made this with love. Love is act love is adding a little bit of extra of, of what you think the person that's going to have it is. So if you know someone's a big vanilla thing, I love vanilla myself. So if you're making someone with love, you're adding a little bit extra vanilla. Right? Um you know, let's say your auntie loves a loves a really spicy. When I say spicy, I mean alcoholic trifle. Now, I, sweetie, you know, I accidentally uh, accidentally slipped with the with the sherry. It's a little bit. It's a little bit more pickled. It's a little bit more pickled this season. I made it with love. <laughs> uh, my coffee is less than fifteen cents per day. Or not fifteen, fifty cents per day. That's good. That's savvy right there. I can get behind that. All right, so we are going to uh, gently stir in the vanilla and egg at one at a time. So it says by hand, but we just have it on speed one. It should be fine. There we go. Get the vanilla in there. Uh, yeah, so it's that. So one at a time. And then we do the sour cream. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the baking is going to be a bit of a fun one. So we're going to be baking for about an hour. Mm. Well, it's going to be less than an hour because we've got less. I don't know what it should do. Let me grab my receptacle that I'm going to be baking these things in. And having a look and see if, if and or how these are going to sit. There. Whoop. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna have to do two at a time. Do I have a? I do. I do actually. <laughs> I do have another baking dish. It's just small enough to have one. I have two there. One in that one. Oh, I bet. All right, let's get the eggs in there now. One at a time. Let that slow do its thing. Uh, I'm actually probably, you know, I'm actually probably uh, do for my vanilla subscription I didn't sign up for. I don't hate it, so I'm not going to cancel it. It's just nice having a constant vanilla beans to use. You have a subscription to vanilla beans? That's cool. <laughs> so what do they, do they just like send you out a packet of vanilla beans every month or something? That's, that's really neat. <laughs> Subscription services can be fun sometimes, I'll admit. Last time I ordered green coffee beans was June, uh, June 17th, and it was $84. But I haven't used the whole bag yet, 10 pound bag. Whoa. <laughs> 10 pounds. Yeah, now I'm gonna try. Hmm. What's that in? I'm gonna say that's what, five kilos, maybe? Damn it. <laughs> Bezos, Bezos knows me too well. No! The evil man knows me too well. Oh, sorry. I was, we were talking about, um... We were talking about weights last night. And when I say weights, we were doing some research on... Uh... On cassowaries. We were playing, playing a game called Dinkum. Which is like Animal Crossing... But with a uh, a more progressive time system, so you don't have to wait a full day to do stuff, and uh, it's Australian themed. And one of the what? Oh, I was gonna say, did I put my foil away? No. Um, 
Uh, and one of the animals that you hunt in the wild is pretty much, it's just a cassowary. Like, they call it something else, but it's a bloody cassowary. And we did a little bit of research to find out just how deadly cassowaries are. And cassowaries are very deadly because they can weigh up to 150 pounds and they kick with a downward strike and yeah they have the force to be able they have the force behind their kicks to be able to break bones and if hit in the right spot kill people <laughs> and they look like big bush turkeys well they look like emus with a mohawk but <laughs> gotta love australia uh seen you playing uh been seeing you playing that they mean to stop by and see what game it was it's on Steam as well, so it's about 20 bucks uh, American at the moment. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, like I said, it's, pre it's pretty much like Animal. It's Australian Animal Crossing. It's adorable. I love it, and I'm probably going to play more off stream because I want to make my island of Nanagoon as best as it possibly can be. And we had a big old thing of where my chickens got out of their coop. <laughs> Either way, it's $84 divided by 172 days, which is less than 50 cents per day, and I make about a litre of coffee per day, which is good value. That's more than good value, Lemon. That is outstanding value. What was I doing? I used all the eggs, didn't I? Yeah, because the pigs over there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> learning, learning how to do... Um, learning how to make coffee yourself that way Oh, like that, I don't want to say that's when you know you have a, a major addiction, but that's that's how you that's how you know how to manage. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you know how to manage your addiction. I need coffee to live, and if I can't, then I'm an absolute beast of a person, and I can't do anything with anyone. How am I going to curb this? <laughs> it's always the same as like. Uh, knowing that you're a werewolf and being able to like trying to find the cheapest way to <laughs> to manage your, your um your lichen three like lichen lichen three lichen three is, is it lichen three I think it's lichen three uh, yeah learn how to manage your lichen three until in, in the most efficient way possible like yeah I am cursed with this I am I'm cursed with this uh, this uh, this ability if you will. But how do I how do I do this on the cheap? How do I do it savvy? <laughs> so 50, 50 cents a day. Now that's that's another way. Uh, that's another thing you can do to make a business out of it. If you know how to make a coffee for fifty cents a day, a liter of coffee for fifty cents a day, that's where you go into business. Uh, I haven't finished this bag, so it'll probably be even less than fifty cents. <laughs> Uh, but I'll redo the math when that happens. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work the math out when the time comes, but in the meantime, 50 cents. 50 cents! And we add in the sour cream. Nice! Uh, and I think that's pretty much it, yeah. Mix our turn into smooth, and we pour the, the cheesecake mix into the pans. Um, we're probably gonna have a bunch of cheesecake left over as well, so I might wrap them up, wrap them up in glad wrap, and yeah, maybe save some for another time. Flash up the street after stream, and grab some, um, uh, grab some tart shells, and just make a few more without the the water bath. Uh, sure, I'd say. That's what we'll do. Hmm. I want to buy a nice roaster or a bigger one, and I'm not sure I'll sell, but I might use it as a giveaway gifts. That would be that would be adorable. Try uh, collab with somebody who can um, make nice nice um nice printed bags. That'd be fun. Oh yeah, this is a uh, super super liquidy. It's all good. I'm gonna I'm gonna bake up real nice. Just take that out. Sit that there. Much like before, I will put that 
pour it into a easy to pour receptacle. See, a part of me would want to go and buy how I usually make cheesecakes. This is where I would want to put gelatin in here and... I mean, I still could. I could actually put some... No, we'll put egg in there. That wouldn't work that well. But, uh... I wonder how much is going to pop up. Hopefully I haven't put too much, uh... Pecan filling in the bottom. Just to be edible. Uh, yes, so the element. Have you ever made anything with cream coffee? Oh. Uh, there's a macaroon filling recipe that I want to try that uses green green coffee. That's a more. What does green coffee taste like anyway? Well, I obviously know what coffee tastes like, but yeah, green coffee. Never. Hmm. Yeah, never really gone down the route of um. Hmm. Alright, so that's my. Yeah, so I've got a whole bunch left over. That's what we get for making small. Small. Oh. It's got about there. It's about an inch up the side, but because we're using the smaller one, I don't want to go too far up. What was the other one I did? So I tried a Japanese style cheesecake and it said to put a tea towel on the bottom. Yeah, put a tea towel in the bottom of the, the pan. I was like, mm, I don't like doing that. I really don't like doing that. Put these ones on the bottom. This one up the top. And we'll stick these in there for... Titch? Are you already activated? No. Titch. Start a, well, 30 minute timer. Start a 30 minute timer. Okay, starting 30 minute timer. There we go. Thanks, Titch. Okay, so yeah, now we've got a bit of a uh, bit of downtime. <laughs> um, it smells like fruity nutty. Oh, okay. Hmm. I would just thought that like if, like a, an unroasted coffee bean would be a, uh, like a very bitter, bit, like a bitter bean in a sense. Didn't really think of it being a fruity, fruity taste. Uh, so that's macaron infiniment infiniment cafe. Uh, macaron infiniment cafe au cafe vert de au cafe bourbon ponteur de la réunion. Oh, damn it! Oh. <laughs> I just got a pop up from my computer. It's like you got an email. It's like I'm just obviously I don't know how to do the accents. So the AU would be like a L. Macaron Infinimint Cafe Al Cafe Verte Al Cafe Bebon Pontu Pontu de 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 la reunion. Is it, do you roll yars in French? Or is that just um, something else? Reunion. I, I, I try it, <laughs> as much as I butcher it, I do like to try doing the, like pronouncing it how they would. Because then it makes me, it makes me look fancy. It, looks, it makes me look smart. Like, oh, this guy knows how to, this guy knows how to, how to speak this language. It's like, no, I just, I just guess. <laughs> I just guess. Uh, I never learned how to do I never learned how to do all the accents on the keyboard in my simple brain. I don't even know how to do that. And I don't even know... I don't know at what point to use what accent and what accent uh, creates what sound. Um, but uh, I like how peanut butter smells roasted, unroasted. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to think, have I had peanuts? I feel like I have had peanuts unroasted. It was either unroasted or they didn't cook them properly, though, because they were very soft. Um, but I've definitely had roasted peanuts, but... Hmm. It smells like... It smells like peanut, but roasted smell 
more intense. Uh, boiled peanuts. Might have been boiled peanuts. So, uh, the first trip I went to Japan with my mate, we went went and saw Sumo's. Um, and we decided to get some snacks. So we decided to get some beer and peanuts. Because if we're at a sports event, what else do you get at a sports event? You get beer and peanuts. <laughs> and the peanuts we got were, they were soft shelled and they were soft in texture. I was like, we've never had peanuts like this. It's usually roasted peanuts or like beer nuts, if you will. And yeah, I mean, they tasted really good, but it was just a very odd texture at the time. So, Zoom on my peoples. <laughs> it was a really good event and very cheap too. I know, uh, I know a lot of people say this in Japan is very costly, but you can do it savvy. You can do it savvy. We spent the whole day at Sumo's, and we spent, I want to say at least a hundred, just a hundred bucks for that day. That was like food, drinks, the event itself, and we had an absolute ball. So we we went from the, to the very beginning to the very end. So we saw we saw the the younguns uh, do their bouts. We saw the the amateurs do their bout. We saw the professionals. Then we saw the Yokozuna get beaten, which was amazing. Everybody throwing their their um, seat mats onto the ring, and it was it was a big deal apparently. And we was yeah, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I saw I saw a kid this big take down a bloke this big. He got him on technicalities and stuff, but he still won. It's like cool. It's a it's a guy to look out for. <laughs> oh boy. I, I don't even know how how pronounce the those e's or that c. It's it's the same with the German. Uh, what is it? A e. We have like the a and e that's um sort of mixed together. I don't know how that's pronounced. I see that all the time. It's like how do you pronounce this? <laughs> uh, and sumo events were fun in my opinion. Enjoy watching them on Twitch. Oh, they're on Twitch. Oh, cool. You can use old plus numbers to get accents. Really. Did not know that. Usually when I um, uh, usually when I uh, do my like get my accents or get my funny characters, I go to another site. <laughs> I just go to a site that's got them preloaded, and I just cap I just copy and paste them. <laughs> uh, language and typing class with lemon, a linguistic reborn. Yes. Because <laughs> not only that, calligraphite. Uh. I took typing in French. Ah. <laughs> um, so I know that there is... But not, not only that, the accents... So the accents... I'm thinking... I'm, look, I'm thinking of Gaelic when, I, uh, when I'm talking about this. But sometimes the accents can change the whole word in itself. So let's take Sean, for example. So you've got the American spelling of Sean, which is, which is the wrong way, as I have been told by many people in my family. <laughs> which is the S-H-A-U-N. So he's like, oh, that's, that's Sean. But then the way that I've been shown throughout my whole life of how to spell Sean is uh, S-E-A-N with the, I think they call it umflouts. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm usually at, but the, the umflout over the E, I'm pretty sure it is. And because you've got that umflout over the E and the way it's spelled, it changes the, the, the dynamic of the word entirely. Like S should, make, should not make a sh sound. Gaelic is a wild one, I heard, yes. Gaelic is very wild. Like, learning... Because uh, cause I have uh, Irish relatives, so grandma's, grandma's Irish. Uh, obviously, all my parents would be somewhat Irish after that. Um, and I've got, a lot of, I've got a lot of uncles and aunties that have Irish names. And the way that they're spelt to the way they're pronounced is just mind-boggling. Like... <laughs> umlaut. Umlaut. Yeah. I thought it was, because mum usually says it, and it's, I've always thought of it as um, umf loud, but it's um loud. Yeah, thank you, Mimi. Um, but yeah, so I, oh, uh, I mean, it wouldn't be too much of a doctor anyway, but, um, is it like, oh, I'm trying, trying to think of some, trying to think of some names. Oh, there's, there's one name that I really, I really like, um, and it's spelled in a way that I don't, I don't think I could ever respell it if I had, if I could try, uh, and it's Sersha. Um, but it's not spelt as how you would think it is. It's spelt completely different. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's a really nice name, but if I wanted to 
call something that, I'm not going to have to do Google how do you spell Sersha. <laughs> yes. That's how you, that's 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 how you spell it. Sersha. <laughs> Uh, Irish French here on mother's side, so I feel so distance from it when it makes me and makes me sad. Mm. What, what have I got for my heritage? We're Irish and Austrian, and I think I lean more heavily into the Irish side because well, we've got so many people in my family on that side. <laughs> Just want, oh, what are some what are some other ones? Is um. Tells97 has requested you hydrate. Well, I mean, I've got it in my hand and I'm a Tells, so I might as well drink it, so cheers, Tells. <laughs> my dad's side is Scandinavian, and they kept up a lot of the traditions. Scandinavians have some very interesting traditions. I don't, I don't, when I say interesting, it's not in the bad sense. They do have some very interesting traditions. Um, I actually can't think of it off the top of my head, but... It, I guess whenever I think of Scandinavians, I think of um, Vikings. And yeah, they were very interesting folk to say the least. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so yeah, because I've got a couple, a couple of my um, family members who have very Irish names. Uh, they've gotten to a point where they just don't, they can't be bothered putting their names down for stuff when we go to restaurants or uh, like parties and stuff. So, um, we'll be sitting there, sitting there at the pub, and like, like you go up, I, I want, you know, the, the Palmer and chips, and chips and salad today. Uh, you know, who's it for? I, for TC, and they'll come out and say, oh, you got Palmer and chips for TC, and then, yep, here we go. Uh, they, they go, turn around and go, you know what, I can't be bothered having to explain how to spell my name or how to pronounce my name. So, <laughs> we'll have, you know, oh, uh, let's say, like, you know, uh, I don't know. Chicken, ca chicken casserole for Charlie, and it's like, well, I know who Charlie is. <laughs> They're not Charlie, but <laughs> uh, my dad was six eight, and his dad was seven one. <laughs> Both were like 400, 300 and four hundred. So yeah, I picked up, I picked up the way, but only the six two out of the deal. Mm, it, was a, it was a big voice. It was a big voice. Watching people, op people, watching people open, what's that? Straw storming? Straw storming for the first time is always hilarious. What is straw storming? Uh, I still remember the first time that experience. I, I don't even know what it is. Uh, I will never, I don't need to know what it's, ah, oh, okay, so it's a food, okay. I'm um, tipping it's like haggis. The nastiest smell is fishy. Ah, oh, okay, okay. I'm thinking of pickled herring. So I was like, what else, what else is like a Nautic, Nautic style fish that people don't like? Yeah, pickled herring, I'm pretty sure it is, but uh, in swelling, in swelling can't. Ooh, so it's like fermented fish. Nope. <laughs> I have some straw storming, it's good for you. <laughs> good for putting me in the grave, stop it. Fermented Baltic herring. Ah, oh, so it is, it is a. Uh, it is a fermented herring. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. I was going to say, it's like haggis. Because I've heard haggis is like a very, really bad one as well. Like, like you know. Heart, lungs, liver of a sheep bald in its own stomach. I mean, the awful is okay sometimes. But, you know, you got to prepare it right. Like, no. <laughs> it's how you tell who your true friends and family are. <laughs> Off was fantastic though. I would say it depends on how you prepare it. So, uh, I had my my folks not so much like try force it down my throat, but it was more they would make it and they would say it, like what most parents do to the kids, like please try it at least before you turn around and say oh no. Like they put they put a lot of time and effort into making this dish, and for you to turn around and say. Kidneys? Sounds terrible. No, I don't want it. Liver? Ew. Yuck. But uh, I did have... I think Mum made a steak and kidney pie. She made a steak and kidney pie, and I had some. Tried it. You know, let's stop being fussy. Let's start being a proper adult now. I can't do the texture of kidneys. Everything else tastes fine. Everything else tastes all good and fine and dandy. 
the texture just does not sit well with me. It's just like, no. I can stomach it and push through it, but it's not something I'm going to go out of my way for. And if I can avoid having kidneys, let's not have kidneys, please. Liver has a really bland taste, so you need to really you need to cook it well. So I can do, I can do liver, kidneys. Yeah, it's just the texture. Just something about the texture of the kidneys is like. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to need to go lurk mode. May your cakes pies come out wonderful, wonderfully, and have a great rest of your stream. Well, thank you for stopping by for as long as you did, Mimi. Thank you so very much for suggesting uh, this recipe as well. I will take photos, obviously, at the end of the stream and post them on all the socials. Most of the socials. I'm very slack when it comes to Twitter. It's usually just Discord and Insta, but I need to start posting more on Twitter. But, um, but yeah, have a good lurk. Uh, it's great to have you here. And yeah, Maybe, I hope it all goes well, whatever you're doing. Uh, only one I had, the only one I had trouble with was brain. Mm -hmm. I just don't like brain sweet breads texture. Sweet breads? Okay. I don't think I've, I, uh, wait. Lamb's fry. Lamb's fry's brain, or is that liver? I don't think I've had brain. And I think just the sheer thought of having the thinking part of something's head, uh, it sort of puts me off. It's like, I mean, if we have to, I mean, I, I might as well, but if I don't have to, then let's try not, please. I will revert back to my six-year-old self and... Ew, yucky! It looks like wrinkled chicken! <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's probably probably the one way that you uh, will get me past those. Like, no, 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 no. This isn't brain. No, no, this is just wrinkly chicken. Wrinkly chicken? How do you get the chicken to wrinkle? Well, sweetie, you stick it in the bath for two hours. You know how you get wrinkly in the bath? That's how you get, that's how you get the chicken wrinkly. Wrinkled chicken. <laughs> Sweet bread is usually the pancreas or some other organs. Oh, so a very niche. Okay, okay. Well, you would. <laughs> it's, uh, now that reminds me of another meme. Reminds me of another meme where, I don't know where the original audio come from, but I've seen a lot of people animate it and like it's the two like two guys one guy busts into the room really angrily like and the other guy's a bit scared he's like do you know what a mountain chicken looks like he's like oh ha have you ever seen a mountain chicken he's like uh, no i haven't he's like do you do you know what a mountain chicken looks like no what do you think it looks like the, the big chicken he's like that's what i thought and he shows a picture and it's a frog <laughs> so a mountain chicken is actually a frog so that's what's going through my head at the moment. It's like, oh, sweet bread. It's just like, it's like a fruit loaf. But no, it's a pancreas. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, they were too squid, squid, jilly, squid, squid, jilly, squid, jilly. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No. Oh. I had a trouble. Did I have trouble? How was the octopus prepared? I had octopus at a Greek restaurant once. I don't know if it was pickled or if it was fresh. But this was the weirdest texture I had. And when I hear squid jelly, that's what I think of. So I had a, it was a cut up octopus tentacle. But when you bit into it, it swelled. I didn't like that. Tasted okay. Like I liked it. I liked the whatever they brined it in or whatever they had it. Um, in there. But the fact that it swelled when you bit into it, oh no, no, <laughs> please, no, no, thank you. I want to say, I want to say it because I grew up in a very bumpkin area of the state. Uh, that's the hunter's tail to nose mentality. Yep, snout to anus. <laughs> uh, I mean. Whatever you need to do to, I guess, like, survive or get by. Like, I have... I, I can have my thoughts, but these thoughts stay in my head. Like, if that's how people grow up and what people like, then I... Yeah, cool. That's fine. Just, I don't want it. <laughs> you can keep it. You can have it. You can have all of it. But uh, I'm... I'm not going to partake. Thank you very much. 
I mean, look, some of the stuff I have, I would say like Vegemite and, Vegemite and cheese. Cheesy bite, or uh, some other stuff like that. People would be like, why, why, uh, yeast extract? Ew. Why? It's like, is this what I'm used to? I mean, look, I've got family members who used to have rabbit. So because rabbits were a big deal over here, um, the, uh, you know, the, the parents would be driving home and they'd see a couple of rabbits on the side of the road, so they'd pull over, pull out the air rifle, bang, bang, we got dinner tonight. Yeah, as if you're going to eat rabbit these days. <laughs> I had squid once at a Korean barbecue. Tasted crunchy. Hey, tasted crunchy, but also chewy. Okay. So, how was it prepared? Did you fry it up on... I'm doing a little bit of washing at the moment, because we, we've got nothing else to do. And I might as well get myself all prepped up and ready for later. Yes. Not sure we'll, we'll see how we mm, we'll see how we're going. We'll see how we're going. We might actually need might need to, to come back and yeah. <laughs> I don't want to just sort of go and we've got them in there and we're going to come back another time. I would like to finish. I would like to finish the cheesecake today, but uh, it's going to be a slow burning process. And is there anything else I could make in the meantime? I don't have enough cheesecake. Hmm. Still never had Vegemite? Ah, you're missing out. <laughs> the heck is Vegemite? The he Vegemite is, um, it is yeast extract. It's the black stuff that everybody nearly throws up when they eat. It's good. It makes me feel like I, if I go to America and people will serve Vegemite on toast, that I'm going to get all of it. <laughs> it was just cooked on the grill. Okay. So I can understand the, the crispy and the chewiness, yeah. So. So I, I quite like, um, I quite like the, uh, what you call it, um, what's it called? Salt and pepper, uh, deep fried squid. Like when you got it crumbed in, uh, like a, uh, like a breadcrumb and you give it a quick fry. That's the kind of stuff I like. Mm. I like that calamari. Done. Mm. I would imagine that happens when you eat a whole spoon of it at once. You want you want to see me eat a spoonful of Vegemite? I got a, I got a jar of it. I got spoons. I can grease it all out. <laughs> I can do it. We had a. Uh, I went on a camping trip through school when I had finished work. Oh, well, not work, finished school. When a school trip, when I finished school. So, it's just a, one of these weird, um, uh, weird excursions that we finished our final exams and then we were allowed to go to Tasmania for a hike, a hike, a hike around Cradle Mountain. And obviously, you've got to pack dehydrated food, you've got to pack everything, uh, you know, non perishable. And somebody had a tube, like a toothpaste tube of Vegemite. You know, you squeeze a little bit on your bread and all that kind of stuff. It was very efficient. And I think I got one as well. And we found ourselves while we were walking, just squeezing a little bit out, you know, licking it off there, eating it, squeeze a little bit more out. <laughs> do it. You really you want to see me do it? Do you butter toast and then put it on or just use it alone on, on the toast? I, I do butter. So I put a bit of butter on the toast first, and then I put the Vegemite on there. I think the only time when I just use Vegemite alone is if I'm turning it into, say, uh, Cheesy Mite sandwiches, or if I'm doing Cheesy Mite scrolls, or all those lines. But for toast, it's usually I usually put the um, the butter on first because of that being a flavor combo uh, and things pairing together. Yeah, yeah. So you got like the this the this like the sweet. Um, now, next thing, Marmite, Vegemite, Marmite gets out. You bring Marmite to my house, you're banned for life. <laughs> you can like it in chat, but if once it comes into my house, it gets out. Marmite's terrible. Vegemite's the only way. Only way. Marmite is for the people who you know, I am a true Australian person. Allow me to eat this black tar with my tea and crumpets. It's like, get out of here, you Brit. 
Get out of here. <laughs> Get the bloody hell out of here, mate. It's either Vegemite or Get Out. <laughs> Never had either. Are they still in flavor? Uh... Marmite wants to be Vegemite. Let's be honest, I've never actually had Marmite. Because I've only ever had... I've only been the upper class across the society of had Vegemite, but... I think Marmite's supposed to be not as intense and not as well flavoured as Vegemite, so... <laughs> uh, looks like it just says, uh, says one more spreadable... Hang on. Looks like it says... It just says one is more spreadable when I searched it. If you mix Vegemite enough, it becomes as pliable as cream cheese. It's like jam. Jam is not spreadable until you work it. Cream cheese is not spreadable until you work it. You just gotta work it a bit. <laughs> Pick yourself, lads. Only Vegemite in these parts. Yes. None of none of this off-brand stuff. The only the only other thing um, it's either veg. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, Titch. <laughs> to respond to her clicking my fingers. Um, we only accept Vegemite in here, but if you want to support local businesses, we shall also accept Mighty Might. Because <laughs> yeah, we have we have um, more. Lo you've got Vegemite, which is Australian, but then you've got an even localer version, which is Mighty Might, which is under the is it Dick Smith? Yeah, I think it is Dick Smith. Dick Smith has a um. As a, I, think, I think he does Mighty Might. TC endorsed Might. <laughs> oh, if I could learn how to make Vegemite myself. <laughs> One thing I hated the most, so a long time ago, I think it was about 10 years ago, they developed a, I think it was a cream cheese Vegemite blend. And they let the public decide the name for this new snack, this new spread that was initially cream cheese and Vegemite. Everybody had the same idea. Cheesy Mite. It, it sounds right. It used everywhere else. You go to small town bakeries and you got a Vegemite and cheese scroll to Cheesy Mite scroll. But you know what one instead? I snack 2.0. That's what they called it. They said, you know what? This is, this is the most innovative name design. For our products, we're going to call it iSnack 2.0. It received that much backlash of how terrible of a choice it was that they recalled all the product and they renamed it Vegemite Cheesy Bite. I still have a jar of iSnack 2.0. It is over 10 years old. <laughs> I have not opened it. <laughs> is veggie? Is it made from vegetables? No, it is complete. It is yeast extract. So there's no veggies in Vegemite. <laughs> iSnack 2.0. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. You'd think that I would have it in my cupboard, but no, I don't. I have it in my spare bedroom. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Titch. Oh, you're already activated. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zooming in. I snack 2.0. <laughs> I hate this so much. <laughs> New! It was it's new! Where's my uh Where is it? I need to know. Do we have an expiration date? Oh yes! Yo wow, it's more than 10 years old! <laughs> I'm not sure we can read that. Best before the 24th of Feb 2010. This went bad 12 years ago. <laughs> Prime aged. Prime. <laughs> Titch? Zoom out. Zooming out. It's still good. It's just a best before day. It's just a. It's a best before. Like, it's still gonna be good. Jar might break on impact. Good to know. But it's still good because the uh, the pop isn't hasn't come off. Refrigerate after opening. Safety button pops when the original seal is broken. Yep. So if anybody's wondering why you've got jams that have a little push top, a little pop top, uh, that's why, because it's a safety seal. So if that, if you can pop the, uh, do I have a jar? I can test that one. I think I do. I think I got some jam. Let's have a look. I do. I got lemon curd. Which I need to use by the end of the month. Or by the end of the year, should I say. So, Yeah. 
So yeah, you got the, if it pops, uh, the seal's been broken and you have to, that's when the, the, I would say the best before comes into play. But this one has not been opened. This is fresh and sealed. I wonder if I can get some money for this. I have the original eye snack. Unsealed or well, unopened, perfectly sealed. $200. There's a YouTuber somewhere who'd open that and eat it without a second thought. And I fear this man or woman or non-binary person. I fear, I fear this person. <laughs> oh, I, oh, how dang! This seems 12 years old. Give it to me. Stick it in my gut. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> the entity of fear indeed, yes. So, you've got the dark. You've got clowns. You've got Slenderman. In my case, Ma. <laughs> then you got this guy here. <laughs> He's just said that a lot. There's only, there's only, what is it? So when people are like, oh, be just me, whatever, it's like, yeah, mate. There's only two things I fear in life, all right? The death of my mum, all right? You don't make the list. Shut up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, how much time we got? Looks like we got four minutes. I'm sort of thinking that I might consider making the uh, the topping soon. Like I say, it's a hard one because not not only do we have to wait, because it's an hour to bake it. Well, the original recipe is an hour, so this is for a six-inch tin. So an hour to bake it, then it says half an hour in the t in the oven, and then half an hour with the oven open to let it cool down again, and then you have to let it sit and cool overnight. Whereas I'm going to be a little bit you know, impatient and try make one at the end of stream, like, so we can finish one up at the end of stream. But, uh, what, hang on, uh, what even kind of name do they give items in Australia? Uh, usually things that end with a, with a vowel. So, um, well, again, like, we got, we got veggie. Oh, wow, that was actually one. That was one minute. Okay, let's give this a check. Let's look at this. A, 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 a look at looky doos. Whenever you're pulling stuff out of the oven or dealing with hot things, make sure you put your safety sharks on. Huh? Don't want to get any burnt fingers. So let's have a look. That is. That is nowhere near baked. I'm actually going to up the temp on that. Give that another. Give that another half hour, I guess. Cause that looks still liquidy. That looks still liquidy. Yeah, 450, yeah, you know, double sugar, salt and flour, three eggs, we put the three eggs in there, the three eggs. Hmm. Titch. Start a 30 minute timer. Okay, starting 30 minute timer. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, usually what we call things, we usually finish with a with a vowel. Um, just because it rolls off our tongue a little bit easier, so. Like we were saying in uh, Dingham last night, we got John, now uh, we call him Jono. Mac? No, he's not, he's Macca. Gaz? Gazza. Dave? Davo. Ben? Benny. <laughs> there's, there's rare occasions where we do, we don't use uh, vowels to end end our, our words. So like with uh, with Michael, we will say Mick. Um, oh, and these things were Ozzy Man reviews. I love Aussie Man Reviews. Aussie Man Reviews is great. <laughs> the... The thing... I want to say that the one thing that disheartened me was I was actually thinking a while ago doing something similar. Uh, but have mine be more like Bogan, Bogan Reviews. And I'd try sit down and review a video game with my most Bogan accent. Um, but then I saw he did Aussie reviews. I was like, well, that's pretty much what I want to do. So he's already he's already got the niche. I can't I can't take that. Out. <laughs> he's a treasure that needs to be protected at all costs. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, he, he's an absolute gem. He's an absolute bloody gem. <laughs> so, so yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to cook these for another half hour. I'm, I bumped it up another twenty degrees. So that's probably gonna be about thirty degrees Fahrenheit. So 180, 180 is probably what. 350? I think it's 350. 
So we'll do that. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm just gonna do some. Oh, I have a chat as well. Just have a bit of a chat. It's actually what I used to do at the start of uh, when I started streaming food and drink. I have a big lot of downtime to do stuff, and I have nothing better to do, so I just sit down and clean. And it helps so much with the end of stream prep because I didn't have to clean, and I could jump in somebody else's raid or jump, jump, jump into somebody else's stream after the raid and actually have a chat with them instead of going, "Oh, I need to work for a bit." And, uh, you know, we got the gist of it. This usually brings on Mozza to do a comedy. I don't think I've seen one with Mozza. I don't think I've seen one with Mozza. <laughs> Might have to go back through his catalogue and uh, watch some of his stuff. Again, should I say. Again. But I think my feed is filled with, like, anime and VTuber crap at the moment. He's like, oh yeah, I'll watch this clip, whatever, and then the algorithm turns around and he's like, oh, I hope you like VTubers, mate. Oh, you want to check, check, check them all out? He's like... I didn't say no, but... <laughs> I'm gonna find them on my own accord instead of having to use to throw down my throat, but yeah. <laughs> There's a hilarious one that has a bar, a bar fight in Tasman. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of... I'm trying to think of the town. Oh. So, hang on, so, so does a commentary over a bar fight in Tassie, or...? <laughs> Aussie man Discord party <laughs> Yeah <laughs> I was actually or oh, I might consider doing that over Australia Day or even next month. Um there's I don't think I don't think anybody when I say anybody, I it's more so the, the non Australians. There was a TV series over here called Russell Coit's All Aussie Adventures. And I have the first two seasons, I disregard the third season because they just tried to rehash it like five years ago because everybody really liked the original ones. And I was thinking of doing that over Discord, like over the Australia Day like weekend or time period because if you ever seen like Outback, Bush Tucker Man, Wildlife Reserve shows and stuff, it's just a satire on that. And it's, an abs it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Uh, can I take this apart? Not really. I hate cleaning this thing. There's, there's so many... Oh, I could. Oh well. We're washing the whole thing anyway. Whatever. I might get that a wipe out as opposed to clean. Uh, there was a bar fight in Tasmania, uh, and it was a long view. <laughs> oh boy. I can, I can just imagine it too. I can just imagine it. Probably, probably a bit. Now that's actually something I didn't do. I didn't tell the playlist to loop. Wait, come here, Mr. Mouse. I bet you anything. Yep. Start up again. Spelled out onto the street. Oh wow. <laughs> I, I can see this being like an outback Tassie town too. Um. But uh. Yeah, I, I can just imagine that. Between, I don't know how many people there were, but uh, I'm what I'm picturing in my head is probably going to be between, say, ten people, and between the ten people, they've got enough teeth to make one set of teeth. Um, <laughs> uh, being a bar fight, I feel like one of them would go for Collingwood, and one would go uh, uh, the football team's Collingwood, and the other one would go for Carlton. There would have been a dispute between Collingwood and Carlton, and. Uh, that's probably what started the fight. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted a snack but ate the whole plate. <laughs> God damn. God damn. Uh, probably still short, short a couple, hang on, short a couple or especially after the fight. Definitely, you know, after the fight, definitely not a, a mouth, <laughs> not a mouth at more. Uh, it was a sports bar. Yep. As soon as, as, soon as you said sports bar, it's probably going to be, it's going to be footy. It's 100% going to be footy. Would have been, would have been sports. 100%. Someone would have come in and made an absolute scene because Carlton beat Collingwood or Collingwood beat Carlton or somebody said they'd go for Fremantle and <laughs> it just would have just gone turned to chaos. 
Yep. So, but I feel like sports bar. It's just the pub still. Like they play sports at the pub. But uh... <laughs> yeah. Now, oh, now I really want to know what the town is because there was a there's another show that we had down here, uh, and it was it was in Hunt for the number one bogan in Australia and. I think it was more of a satire show, so they, these people, I don't think these, I, I want to say these people weren't actually who they said they were, they were more caricature, caricatures of, uh, of how people would consider residents of these towns, but I have a feeling they also were legit, and there was a town in Tassie where, oh, what was the deal? They bring a, bring a mini bike into the kitchen? Or was it like right up to the? Oh, I feel like it was in the kitchen. Like he, he brought his his bike or his mini bike into the kitchen. He ripped a burnout in the kitchen. So he just sat there and just smoked the tires in his kitchen. I think his wife and his mum and his kids were in there as well. And they're just like, "What the hell are you doing, Kaz?" <laughs> He's like, "Oh yeah." Whoop! Wearing thongs and a short and a wife beater, and it's just. <laughs> Just smoking them up in his kitchen and say, Yeah, boy, check it. <laughs> Doesn't say what town it's in. I feel like I know what the town is, though. <laughs> There's just those towns. There's those towns in Australia that even if they say that, oh, there was a uh, uh, there was a domestic a domestic dispute uh, for, between d between people uh, who were intoxicated in uh, was it. Out, out back, out back, New South Wales, or you know, rural, rural um, New South Wales. Like, mate, that's Dubbo. Like, <laughs> don't sugarcoat. Just say it's Dubbo. <laughs> there was a uh, <laughs> there was a mass fight which resulted in a few people getting stabbed in in the eastern suburbs of Victoria. Mate, that's Frankston. <laughs> it's Frankston. Just <laughs> don't sugarcoat it. Don't 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 make it sound like you know it's not that big a deal and still come to our town because it's nice it's frankston all right frankston is where people get high on drugs and stab people like <laughs> oh man <laughs> everywhere there is there's a florida man locations exactly everywhere i, I want to say uh for us, it's the states. Every every state has a Florida man sort of thing. And I was actually having a chat with my mates about Florida man, the whole Florida man thing. I feel like the reason why Florida man is so uh, wide known is because I'm not sure. I'm not sure of it. And I, if people are from Florida or know of the proper situation, my thought is because Florida's news outlets. Uh, it, uh, it's it's more so like Florida's news outlets are so relaxed on what they can um, uh, I want to say broadcast but uh, publish that's what I'm looking for because their, their, their news tabloids and stuff are so lenient to what they can publish a lot of weird stuff gets put through the filter and obviously to make sure that uh, it is anonymous they just go Florida man or Florida woman did this and it sounds like they're trying to go more for shock value these days, like, um... Uh... There's a game, there's actually there's actually a very funny game that uh, my mates put me onto. And you search up your birth date, so whatever your date, not like the, the proper, the whole date including the year, but just, just the day and the month of when you're born. And that's, that's how you find out what Florida man or woman you are. And... Uh, I think my one was Flor Florida man punches horse and says F them horses. So like, how is this newsworthy? Like there has to be a reason why they're so lenient and so crazy with their shock value with the <laughs> with the um the news articles that they'll are willing to just go Yeah. <laughs> well this is newsworthy. Someone punched a horse and said F them horses. Put it on the front page. Because <laughs> I can't see the like news 
news days are that quiet that that's the only thing you can report on. Just some crazy drunk man turns around and says, I'm going to punch a horse. I, I said I was going to wipe it, but I'm going to wash it anyway. Why not? Whatever. Uh, now what was the other? I'm going to... Uh, I think the first one that got it going was Florida Man on Bar Salt Zombie. On Bar Salt Zombie 1. Oh, oh, sorry. I think that's the first one that got it going. Uh, man on Bar Salt Zombie 1. And the meme was born. But the news tabloids still... They still post them. Like... One of the ones for my birth date and... Uh, it was 2020, I'm pretty sure it was. So I was thinking it was two years ago that Florida man was arrested by hitting someone with the, like, by hitting a woman with the letter G or something. And the story pretty much goes that this person was disgruntled, so they picked up a sign and threw the sign at this woman, and the letter G hit them. So it's like, why didn't he be so specific about this? I'm not sure what tabloid it, uh, published it, but I don't think it was the Onion. I would have, I would have picked up on the Onion, but uh, yeah, it's just was this really necessary to sort of <laughs> the amount of stuff that gets slid under the radar here, like newsworthy things, like somebody, uh, yeah, it's certainly a big joke now. I, I don't, I, I'm not saying I hate it. I'm not saying I hate it. It's just, it's just a weird phenomenon. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff that flies under the radar here that should be newsworthy. Like people, people who are drink driving, speeding, crashing their car, and killing everybody in the car but themselves. And that, and you hear by word of mouth of that, it's like, oh, do you hear what happens? Hear what happened? You know, five towns over or whatever. So and so, you know, it was it was one of my friends, uh, one of my one of my friends' daughter's school friends that was involved in that accident, and you hear nothing about it. Like, nothing on the news, nothing anywhere else. It's like, oh, it's just another thing that's happened. Okay, no big deal. Or, again, like, I see a, cr a big crash around my area, and you know it's a big one because they closed the road down for more than an hour. It's like, okay, someone, someone's actually got seriously hurt here. Might check out the news and see what actually happened. And then you hear nothing about it. So, okay, fine. I'd like to, like to have known what had happened to get a bit better story about it, but... I don't know. <laughs> don't know where this rant is going on to. Because the news tabloids are just just tickle me the wrong way. That's why I don't I don't watch TV. How many people do we know say that? <laughs> how, many, how many people do we know say say that comment? I don't I don't watch TV anymore. I watch streaming services. Shut up. All right. <laughs> I get it. You watched, you watched Wednesday on Netflix. You thought it was the best show ever, and you're just like everybody else. <laughs> Don't watch TV. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, yeah, they just want the clicks and views and a quick turnaround. Uh, hang on. And a quick turnaround anymore. A lot of real news just doesn't get the reported like they used to. Yeah. What they sit down and say, what can what can make our our viewers riled up? as quickly as possible and how can we do this on a regular basis and yeah it's when I say riled up like some sometimes there's, there's bound to be those people who see the Florida man Florida man did this and they're gonna be like well you shouldn't be giving them bloody welfare checks and this is why we got a problem with the bogans in Dubbo like you keep giving them money for nothing and they just spend it on alcohol But yet, something major is happening, like I don't know, cost of living is going up, and uh, rent rent is going up, uh, and housing isn't doesn't look like it's going to go down anytime soon. But now we'll just keep keep doing, you know. That message was for a previous comment that I already no, I forgot already. <laughs> That's all good. That's all good. We're just having a bit of a rant about tabloids and the uh, all that kind of crud. Waiting for these cheesecakes to to bake and set. When I had a look at them, they were very, very jiggly to say the least. Like, uh, but I, but I just say I watch series, whether on TV or streaming. 
yeah, there's what my comment was more there's people out there, and I say it a fair bit myself, so <laughs> I'm no, I'm not, um, I'm no saint in this point. So listen to me, I'm the, I'm the true messiah. Um, but there are people saying, I don't watch TV anymore. Like, there's just so much crap on TV. I just don't watch TV anymore. Which is me. I don't watch TV anymore because there are there is so much crap on TV. It's all reality TV shows and, and the news. And yeah, streaming services, I think, is just where it's at. And I can't physically watch TV anymore because I can't deal with all the ads. I can deal with a 30 second ad block at the start of a video and the end of a video, but I can't deal with 20 second ads every five minutes. Just being old men, being crotchety, yes. Let me, let me rant about one of the TV channels that's down in Australia. We have a TV channel called Seven Mate. Seven Mate, and it's the bloke channel. It's got the cars, it's got the footy, it's got Family Guy, it's, it's for the boys. It's for the blokes. I hate it. <laughs> but uh, they, have, they have a deal where they'll be playing the show and they'll do their little 20 minutes or like 10 minute show Five minutes ads, ten minutes show, five minutes ads, ten minutes. It pretty much is Fox. It's it's Aussie Fox, but um, or Spike TV. I think Spike TV is the uh, the closest to it, but still. Um, so they have they have their, their blocks, blah, blah, blah. but then towards the end they have this stupid little segment where they play one minute of the show, like it's the throwaway gag of say American Chopper or something like that, where you know, oh we're just doing a little bit of a funny skit. It goes for I kid you not, no more than three minutes, no more than three minutes. And then they cut straight back to another big block of ads. So this little section of the show is smaller than the ad break. And that just gets me so, so mad. Like, just play the damn show. Like, if you want more ads, then have more ads between the shows. Don't give me this tiny little snip tidbit of, you know, oh, it's a minute of, you know, let's say Mike Rowe turn around going, you know, it's a monkey doing his dirty jobs and doing the, the, the monkey baby scene. It's like, yeah, check it out, it's a monkey. And then it cuts to the ads. It's like, no, just play the ads at the end. But then, you know, I just, I despise ads anyway. So. <laughs> That's why I pay for YouTube Premium. So I had enough of uh, having to sit through an ad to watch a bloody three minute video. <laughs> I just want to watch a clip with this funny VTuber I don't want to sit through ads. <laughs> okay, even the first, hang on, even after the first year, you're gonna have to swap off Chrome to Firefox because the ad changing on their end. Yeah. Another thing I can suggest, I don't want to save you if your pockets are lined with gold, but uh, if you want to still support Twitch viewers or Twitch streamers, if you still want to support Twitch streamers but can't afford or justify spending. So subscriptions over every one of the channels you support. Try Turbo. Go Twitch Turbo. Twitch Turbo is pretty much the YouTube premium of Twitch. So it's ad-free watching across the board. Should be across the board. Sometimes there's stupid little hiccups in the system. Um, so it's ad-free watching across the board, but the viewer, the, the channel that you're watching will still get the ad revenue as if you were watching ads. So I know it's not the same as dropping a subscription to the channel itself, but if you can't be bothered with ads or you hate the pre-roll ads or the post-roll or like the ads in between, um, it's a good way to still support the, the streaming that you enjoy. And watching three ads for a 30 second YouTube video. Exactly. Exactly. Get the double double from KFC! And then we watch some kid try to do a backflip into a pool and really break his spine. <laughs> I tend to just whitelist Twitch at the moment and let folks get their monies. Well, look, to be honest, the Twitch the Twitch ad revenue at the moment is pretty garbage, yo. If you if you want to ask me, <laughs> that's why I personally don't like. I, I know I have to run ads because of Twitch being Twitch. If I could not run ads and just go through other means, like have subscriptions be something different, uh, like access to emotes and maybe maybe a, some other special contents like Patreon or whatever, I'd go down that route. I would turn off the ads altogether because not only do I think they're um, 
trying to think of the word. The first word that came to my head, uh, head was disheartening, but that's not the right word. Disengaging. It's very disengaging, especially when it comes to cooking streams. So I can't, I can't just turn around and say, you know what, I'm going to start. Like, I, I can put manual ads in, but I don't know how the whole revenue crap works. But I can't just turn around and go, you know what, we're going to have a five minute break here. We're going to run some ads. Um, go grab yourself a snack, whatever. And then I just run ads and take a break myself, you know, uh, grab a drink or, you know, use the facilities, all that kind of crap. I don't know how I can do that or if I can do that. And I don't want Twitch to turn around and say, you've been streaming for an hour, here's three, three minutes of ads or here's 30 seconds of ads. Because I could be in the middle of a conversation, then bam, Sandman, part three or act three on, um, uh, but he, <laughs> what's, what's it called? Um, Audible. Like, no, stop that. Like, and then you have to wait until the ads are finished and then you come back and the subject has completely changed. The amount of times I've got a message preloaded to make a comment on what somebody has said for an ad to come in and I have to wait for the ad to finish before I can, for, for myself, post a, post the message so I don't have, post the message and they respond to it while the ad's playing and then they, like, I don't know, some big insightful thing that have this tiny little rant about it and then I come back and say, well, thank you for your input, TC. Uh, you know, it was a very good comment you made there. It's like, but I didn't hear your response! No! <laughs> uh, I legit asked a question and the streamer was about to answer. Exactly, yep, yep. Uh, no, Danny was trying to test out ads. Yeah. I'm, look, I'm I'm not against people who want to try and make a little bit of money off Twitch, and this is the best and easiest way to do so. But um, yeah, it's it's just I don't know if they I don't know if there was a way that you could uh, as a affiliate because I think partners are allowed to like you have an agreement with Twitch itself to say I'm going to run this many ads and I'll choose when to run the ads, or I'm not going to run ads. I've got my own uh, ad provider that I'll run the things for but if the affiliates were able to choose how long like I'm going to run the ads when I want um, then there's ways that you can make the ads still engaging and be able to um, warn the people that you're that you've got viewing about the ads so there's there's always just setting the timer so I think Danny's done that so Danny Danny Mizu um, uh, she's trialing ads and She'll have a timer that, you know, oh, in this many minutes, um, an ad will play. So she'll go, oh, an ad's about to play. Sorry, guys, all that kind of stuff. But there's a way that you could set a timer yourself to do the ads. And you could go, you know what? We're going to have an ad break. Uh, I saw somebody who did a perfect transition for an ad break, and it was the Who's That Pokemon? And it was loaded up with, I think, 400 and something Pokemon. So I think it was from Gen 1 to Gen 4. And it would start with the Who's That Pokemon with the silhouette, and then the ads would play. And then during the ads, whoever doesn't have a sub will, um, uh, you can talk in the chat. It's like, oh, I think it's this Pokemon. Oh, I think it's this Pokemon. Then once the ads are finished, it reveals the Pokemon. And then you go back to your regular, your, your regular, regular scheduled uh, streaming. And it's like, that would be so good to have, if it, like, something like that. Like, a, a warning. It's like, hey, we're going to take a break. Uh, a BRB happens, and then the ads start. Instead of just like, ah, oh, ads happen. Ads happen. <laughs> but I don't know. I love how creative people get with little dilemmas like that. I know. It's just so good. Um, but I, I would have that in a heartbeat. I would definitely have that in a heartbeat if I if I could. Uh, well, still not even, not even because maybe for the gameplay streams. Maybe for, like if I have a big gameplay session, it's like, all right, after an hour and a half or something, let's have a break. We'll have a break, we'll have two minutes of ads and then come back to it. Cooking, I can't see myself doing that because stuff's always happening. Except for now, like we could probably have a break now and then come back. But um, when I'm cooking stuff and making stuff, I don't want to stop what I'm doing because an ad has to play and because somebody wants to see me, you know, pipe a silly face on a gingerbread man or, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I just can't get myself to... Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's just how Twitch is. That's just how Twitch is. Uh, speaking of break BRB, you got to get the oven heated... I'm going to get the oven eating... Heating? Sorry, not eating. 
uh, put some stuff now the fridge uh, come up to 10 well okay <laughs> uh, I'll say take your time with that don't stress um, I hope it all goes well for you um, how much time have we got left looks like three minutes we've got three minutes and these look like they're actually starting to do something uh, with the amount of time that we've got just assessing the situation because this might actually unfortunately be one of these situations where I have to come back and well not come back but I'm gonna have to show people the process like the finished product after we're done just because I didn't actually have any plans else to do today I was just gonna do this and I was hoping that it was gonna be in the oven a bit quicker and finished and done sooner so and like I said I can't have the because I've got eggs in the cheesecake mix, I can't have the, I can't just add gelatin to the cheesecake mix and go, yeah, that's good enough. And then we'll have a set cheesecake and a baked cheesecake because well, you've got raw eggs and then you can't really be serving raw eggs to people. Even if you have good regulations on egg, uh, some sort of things. But uh, what I could do, like I said, what I could do in the meantime too is make the topping. So we can, we can make the topping once this is somewhat done, I can pull one out and try bastardize one, maybe. Maybe have the topping ready to go, and uh, I'm not I'm not sure what I want to do with this, to be honest. But hmm. I need to do something. I need to definitely do something. So what's the so the topping? So the topping is pretty much just sugar, sugar, uh, no, sugar, butter, brown sugar, vanilla extract, cream, and pecans. Uh, what we're doing is melting the butter and the brown sugar in a small pan, bring to a simmer for two to three minutes, remove from the heat, stir in the vanilla and cream, whisk until smooth. And then we put in the pecans and then we pour that over the cake. So I can have the topping ready to go with. Let me have a quick look at some corn syrup, okay. And eggs and egg because my thing was going to be we do have a bunch of the filling left over so we could just add cream to that and turn that into the topping but because it's got eggs on it or eggs in it well the eggs are somewhat cooked as well like we had that over the stove yeah i'm trying to be lazy i'm trying to be lazy i know <laughs> i know i'm trying to be lazy it's also like i don't want to make more dishes for myself if i can just turn what i've already got into a into a topping but the topping is going to be better with that so We'll make we'll make some we'll make some topping real quick, and I will try and at least try get one for presentation, if you will. Oh. Uh, when I put my uh, my scales are right here. Oh no, I didn't wash these two bad boys. It's alright, we can wash them later. We'll wash them later. So uh, I put the I didn't put the butter away. Good job, TC. We've got some soft butter still on hand. What I need for this? I need 57 grams. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the cheesecake. Dasha, the cheesecake. Let me weigh up my butter real quick. This is a quarter of a cup of butter for anybody that uses a freedom measurement still. Oh, that's perfect. I have to cut up another piece. It's teetering on 37 to 38 grams. That's good. I know the sugar. How much sugar was it? It was a third of a cup. Uh, I put the third cup away, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Easy. Okay. could also talk about what we're doing next week as well. I think that might be a bit of an uh, interesting thing to do and obviously um, I don't want to say kill time but yeah we can kill some time while doing that as well. Oh no, come on fire it. There we go. So I need to do that on low heat too. If I have that on too high I'm going to cook the sugar before the butter melts. We do not want that. Excuse me. Um, 
What do I need to do? Uh, no extract, I did not put away, which is all good. Uh, heavy cream, we need a quarter cup of heavy cream. That's out. I did buy some new heavy cream, or thickened cream. I love the, uh, the, the, uh, the naming differences between, uh, I'm gonna take that off the heat and then, and then stir it. Yeah, I love the naming th the naming differences between different countries, like thick and cream and heavy cream. They're both the same, but we we call it thick and cream, and you guys call it heavy cream. Um, there's probably some other things as well that I can't think of off the top of my head, but um, uh, so sugar, yep, yeah, and then it's vanilla, yeah, and then I just got to chop up a few um, a few pecans, chop up a few more pecans. Uh, yeah, stir them, stir them in. So do I put them into the mix as well? I do put them into the mix. More pecans. Pecan. I think I said this is another stream. Is it pecan or pecan? There's no R in there, so that's why I don't say pecan. So you don't say I can't do it, unless you are in a part of the world that says things wrong. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so twitter.com slash uh, um, titanium underscore chef. Um, you can cancel me there because of my prejudice between people who can't <laughs> who can't speak proper English. <laughs> uh, pecan. Yeah. Or oh, pecan. Hmm. I say pecan. Pecan. But, uh, uh oh, came back to which name dilemma? Ah, oh, yep. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's definitely a, um, uh, it's just a region based thing, like, can and can I guess. Like, I can do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. Um, let me grab my little whisk, my little silicon whisk for this. I mean, you've also got like aubergine and eggplants. You've also got, uh, well, that's, that's just a weird one. Aubergine's what it's actually called, but eggplant is what is easier to say. Oh, oh right, my, um, my thing finished. Alright, we need, we need that to simmer for a tad bit. Alright, so let's have a look and see how our cheesecakes are doing. Oh, now that's, that's good. That's... Yep, okay. So what I'm going to do here, to be a real schnicky snack, is we're going to turn the oven off. They're not jiggly per se, but they are set. So, the oven is off, but I'm going to use my tea towel. To prep the oven door open. Like I know it says it's let and sitting there for uh, 30 minutes with the door uh, closed and 30 minutes with the door open. I'm gonna leave the door open for a bit because I'm gonna be a little bit, a little bit schnicky, a little bit impatient. Because I'm going to bake one of these. I'm gonna bake these. I'm gonna try prep, pop one of them out. Hmm. Yum yum. A bit of uh, butter sugar. Uh. I just had this argument with another uh, the other day trying to rem uh, trying to remember where saying things that are weird for coin calling an eggplant or like was that quarter quarter jay quarter jay or zucchini I would say zucchini but that's just because that's what I've grown up with um, um, And there's other there's other silly ones too that I know of. It's it's not something that you like the little people for. So I think I'm not sure if I've asked not uh, not just you Baker, but anybody else is new in chat. Anybody know what a cackleberry is? This is sort of the same thing with the uh, the mountain chicken <laughs> comment before, but uh, yeah, do we know do we know what a cackleberry is? I know there's one person there's one person in chat that knows it. What would you what would you think of 
What would you think of when you would hear Cackleberry? As well makes me giggle all the time. <laughs> Peppers and capsicums, yeah, that's true, Mark. That's true. That's true. And yeah, the reason the reason I, why I'm talking about uh, <laughs> Cackleberries is because of you, Mark. <laughs> Uh, I've also heard about cloudberries the other night too. Never seen one. Hmm. A peppercorn? Uh, a cackleberry is a chicken egg. <laughs> now it makes sense. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's uh, that's Mama TC's doing right there. Guys, go get me the cackleberries. Oh, what? Uh, ooh, ooh, uh, another one that um, uh, somebody in chat told me about. Ghost Broccoli. <laughs> ghost Broccoli is the best one I think I've ever heard. <laughs> the old head of, head of Ghost Broccoli. Or Cauliflower, if you will. <laughs> that one's just adorable. That one's adorable. I was trying to think of something small that made a crunch, but it was far off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is one of those fun ones. It's like, oh yeah, it's just a cackleberry. It's a little berry that comes out of a cackling animal. I mean, you could also uh, run uh, moo juice as well. Ma says moo juice. <laughs> get, get me the full fat moo juice. Moo juice sounds a bit weird though. That's a bit, especially being on the internet as long as I have been. Like, it's like. Mm. <laughs> Growing up, my guy Ryan renamed everything. <laughs> it's just a game I enjoy. It's fun. <laughs> what are some, uh, yeah, what? <laughs> Bullfrog? That's a funny name. I would have called him Charles Weiss's. Ah, <laughs> oh, now I need a thicker, <laughs> I need a thicker spoon. Go get me a pot of the Charles Weiss's, dear. <laughs> Now that I'm thinking about Charles Waza, um, I'm a little bit upset that there wasn't a, an animal in Dinkum called a Charles Waza. Or even the Frill Neck Lizard. The Frill Neck Lizard should have been called a Charles Waza. <laughs> uh, like my, my car seat was my buckle and my blanket was the rug. Oh, now see that? Hmm. Oh, bucket, sorry, I, I, was, I read buckle. Okay, so you, you can't see it was a bucket. Now, ooh. Now, that's a, that's a, when you say bucket, that's a, there are type of car seats out there called bucket seats, obviously. So it could have just been a part of her time. Like they could have had more bucket seats in cars when she was growing up. So it's just like, ah, oh, you put them in the bucket. But the blanket and rug, uh, that's a little bit of a weird one. I would say Blanket and Duna. Blanket and Duna are two different ones for me. Well, not two different ones, one and the same. So you give someone a, a blanket to put on their bed, it's a blanket, but it's also called a Duna down here. <laughs> uh, bucket seats are small, uh, uh, in the small supporters. Mm -hmm. Or maybe she had a bit of a hot, maybe you had a hot rod granny. A hot rod granny. <laughs> you wanna see how fast this thing goes? Yeah, a quarter mile the other day in six seconds. Nan, you're, Nan, Nan, you're pushing the stroller. <laughs> He's got so much power. Back in my day, I could bench press 150 kilos. <laughs> Rally cars have bucket seats. Yeah, yeah. So it's more sports cars that have bucket seats, but. Hmm. Uh, we call it apple sauce apple gum. Now that's that's a weird that's a weird change of um, change of name. Apple gum for sauce. <laughs> Driving with her, I could be <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Ah, uh, yep, she's got the she's got the lead foot. Mm -hmm. oh, I know that all too well. <laughs> I got a bit of a, a little bit of lead foot myself sometimes. So you go face her because <laughs> you, you can because you can gum the apple sauce. Oh, okay. It's a weird, it's a weird uh, thing to associate it with, but still. <laughs> Get me the old apple gum, sweetie. I'm feeling a bit peckish tonight. All right, so this is where I'm going to be a little 
cheeky cheeky. I'm gonna put it I'm put it on I have another I'm put it on this plate here. So I'm gonna prep one up. This is, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be a little old fun time. I'm gonna take these out. I'm gonna put one on the bench here. I'm gonna try and take the maybe put the plate aside for now. And growing up, uh, and growing up going to friends' houses early on was just cool and <laughs> sorry, let me try that again. And growing up going to friends' houses early on was calling things by the wrong name and having them look at me like, what the hell are you asking for? <laughs> uh, yep. Yep. That one friend in the group. Could you grab the apple fritters? What the, what the fritter? What? Oh, swell, Mrs. Jones. You got any apple, apple gum for this? What? Wait, who the hell is this child? <laughs> Seems a bit simple. Oh no 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 mum, he's just from Deep's house. <laughs> Crud over. Alright. Woo! Titch is here. Nice! Looks like we had a bit of a leak. A bit of a leak with our um our trays. So because we've already got the liner off that one, because this is obviously gonna be very hot, so be very careful, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. You're gonna burn your fingies if you're not careful. I've burnt my fingy on stream. I do it so you don't have to. Now I'm tipping this is supposed like it says it's supposed to be jiggly, but this is not really jiggly per se. Like that's that's a set cheesecake. Yeah, it looks like it still somewhat we can see that. Like it looks like it's still sort of hmm. Right, I'm thinking hmm. Just having a little uh, poo-poo and naysay with my um, with my camera, it's my phone. It works well at the start of the stream, but I think as the as the stream goes on, the phone doesn't like being on for as long as it is, so... I'm probably going to have to invest in another camera, but... I had enough of this one being the camera, so... Alright, so which one are we going to start with? See if I can. Ooh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Very, very soft on the bottom. Whoa, that jiggled. <laughs> right, so what I'll do here is. I'm going to throw them in the freezer. Throw them in the freezer for a bit. Flat, flat spoon to lift off. Um, they were still very soft on the bottom. So if I were to put anything under there, put any form of pressure, it would have just, I would just, just destroyed it. Absolutely destroyed it. Uh, my thought process is going to be leave one in the tin and just spoon some of the uh, topping or the um, some of yeah some of the top. Top stuff. Topping! <laughs> uh, looking cheesecakey. Yeah, they're actually looking pretty good. I was expecting them to be more jiggly, but I'm tipping what you're supposed to do. Is you're supposed to have the... Because um, it says you got to have the, the crust halfway up the shell. So I'm tipping you're supposed to have the, the rest of the cheesecake be up the top, whereas we've just got it all encased. Just going to say that. Yeah, yeah. But my thought process is going to be we'll put some of the topping on it now. Just so we can get like a nice final shot then i'll come back later when they're fully set um put some more filling on them take some photos and put them on discord maybe later tonight or even tomorrow um that way we're not just sort of again 
I don't, it's not that I don't like sitting around with you guys and having a chat. It's just I don't want you guys to just feel. I don't want you guys to feel a bit bored that I'm just sort of I'm washing dishes or like that. I feel bad for subjecting you to like I have nothing to do. <laughs> what if I don't want pecan pie? Um. I can always make you something else. <laughs> I've still got cheesecake. We can make a blueberry cheesecake. I'm actually thinking maybe I'll do that. Make another baked cheesecake, but make like a blueberry thing. Obviously off stream, like I don't have the... I mean I do, but I don't. But I do, but I don't. <laughs> I'll probably just get like a pie plane or something and do that. I don't know. But uh... Do one with without pecan, dust with ice and sugar. They all have pecan in them, unfortunately. So they actually have a pecan filling. So that's why it's like we have to make something else for MT because MT doesn't want pecan. MT is going to be that difficult child. I have a nut allergy, sir. <laughs> Shouldn't joke too much about it because um, allergies are something we should be taking seriously. We should be taking uh, allergies really seriously. But not too seriously where you can't have kids have certain foods at school because, you know, oh, little Jimmy over here can't have peanuts, so no peanut butter for anybody. And uh, he also has to sit in the corner while he eats his lunch because some of you snotty little bums are uh, probably going to have peanut butter at home. We're going to have peanut butter residue on your fingies. We don't want you touching Johnny, all right? Because Johnny's going to swell up like a balloon. And uh, because of cut, uh, budget cuts, none of our teachers have first aid training. So, <laughs> there's some Uncle Roger level of ribbing gear. <laughs> bloody, bloody MT. But I hope you're doing well, MT. I hope all's going well. So, what, yeah, what I'm going to do here is. Just for the sake of, like, making sure we can finish up with the. No? No, they're not shrinking. They're not shrinking. Yeah, so what I'll do here is I'm going to put a bit of the sauce on top and then we'll leave it on the on the thing there I had it zoomed in interesting <laughs> but why is it all weird and zoomed in probably because I had it zoomed in eh Like I said, I'll, I'll save some of this for later, and we'll put some, we'll have some properly, like I'll have one that actually has the outside. Hitch? You still on? Stove camera off. Deactivating stove camera. He's on. Alrighty. Hitch? Zoom in. Zooming in. So here is a early representation or an early shot of our pecan pie cheesecake uh, obviously as mentioned before I am going to have the rest of them set properly before I remove them from their uh, spring form prisons and I will do the, the necessary precautions to make it look like this but without the ring around the outside so it does look very tasty it does look very tasty it makes me want to like just have a spoonful of each <laughs> uh, just like hey, have a spoonful of each and just eat it at the one time I could, I could definitely have the filling and the topping, um, but uh, save some for ice cream topping. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely a good idea. Titch? Zoom out. Zooming out. Uh, well, I want to know what the uh, filling tastes like at least. So, oh yeah, that's, that's actually really... Honestly, it's just caramel pecan. <laughs> Without being so anticlimactic. This is gonna taste like a vanilla cheesecake with some caramel pecans. Good. Car caramel is good. Vanilla is god tier. 
this is just a good combination. And the fact that this is going to be two layers, so we're going to have that layer of, um, that's actually something I will do. When I take the photos, I might put it on like a bigger plate or a bigger board. And I'll have one that's got this going on for it. And then I'll have one that's cut in half and spread. So you can see the inside as well. Look out for that. So Titch, Titch, plug the socials. Here is TC's socials. So this is where you can probably find most of the photos. So you've got the, I might post it on Twitter. Not a, I'm not guaranteeing Twitter. I'm not big presence on Twitter. Um, Instagram is where I post most most of, if not all of my photos. Uh, we also have a Discord, so if you want to drop by and post photos of your food, uh, talk gaming, um, share recipes, and just generally have a chill, wonderful time, uh, drop on by the Discord. I do have a YouTube as well. Uh, I have not been posting current VODs, but I do have previous VODs there, and I plan to get off my butt and actually edit one that I need to edit because I accidentally stopped the recording midway through the stream because of a joke. Um, so I need to fix that up. And there was a lot of um, technical issues that happened during that, uh, in that stream as well. So um, as soon as I get that one edited, then I'll start posting the rest of them uh, along the way. So yeah, we've got all that going. Uh, let's have a look. Have a look, she. Have a little old look, she, at who is currently on at the moment. And we'll see if there's anybody new that we want to pop by and show the love to. Let's have a look. Shall we? Uh, let me pop that. Mute that. Lower that down. Oh, right, I've got to wait for my um, keyboard to wake up. My keyboard turns off after a certain amount of time. Power saving. Stop. Alright, so who have we got at the moment? We've got. Uh, we're at Dana's Kitchen, but we were at Dana's Kitchen last week. Uh, we have Camel. Camel is cooking God knows what. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be it for the food and drink aspects at the moment. But uh, let me see if I can pull up, pull up food and drink and get that ready to check stuff there. But if there's anything... Uh, uh, Game-wise, we want to watch. We do have someone playing the uh, the Talos Principle. Uh, we're playing. We've got someone playing Scarlet and Violet. Uh, somebody's doing special events. Oh, they're watching the Game of Rewards. Uh, Little Inferno, another Scarlet and Violet. Uh, we've also got somebody drawing art, so doing uh, doing emotes for uh, Material Dragon Goral. Okay. Um, and then in the food and drinks category, let's. Cooking. <laughs> yeah, camel and cooking. I know, right? Uh, but in food and drink, let's see who's out there in the wide old world of... Uh, uh, what the hell? Hmm. Oh, we've got Mishmish. I, I don't know. I'm not even following Mishmish at the moment. We'll drop by Mishmish and... Uh, and say hello. Um, you're doing. So Miss Lisa's doing decorating cookies. Um, so we've got cookie decoration. Uh, yeah. If there's anybody else out there that people uh, know of who want to guide the raid, uh, by all means. Uh, at the moment. I'm thinking it's either going to be. Oh, I want that down. That down. Um, although we've, we've also got uh, Hungry Manning. What are you doing? This season for sugar cookies. Do you usually do food and drink? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a hard one, really. It's really a bit of a hard one. Hmm. Who else is doing food and drink? Not much more. Not much more. There's not much more we can go. We can go for. I'm mostly thinking we go mishmish. Yeah. So let's go. Let's drop by mishmish. Uh. So what I want here, I want that one there. 
but yeah, I've seen Mishmish Mish stream before as well. Um, but yeah, for some reason I haven't got by and followed them yet. So. Why did you not? Mish Mish. Doon Poon Ring, yep. Yeah? yeah, it's the one. Alright, so. Let's drop in a raid message. Whoop. Let's drop in a sub raid message for the people who are in the frenzy. That's not how you spell raid. So. Let's do that. So I've got the, the raid loaded up. Let me copy my own message so I don't forget. Uh, so yeah. To everybody who came by and checked out what I was doing today, thank you so very much and uh, hanging out with me. Um, I know it was a little bit of a slow, chill, relaxed stream, but uh, yeah, when you have to wait for stuff to bake and wait for stuff to cool down, um, there's not much we can really do in that aspect. But it was very, very great for you guys to, to hang out with me. Uh, thanks to everybody who came by and had a chat with me as well. It was great to have your company. Um, and thanks, obviously thanks for input and all that kind of stuff. Uh, thank you for the redeems, the bits, all that kind of jazz. And I will obviously be um, uh, messaging Mimi on Discord to make sure that I've done a good enough job. Keep an eye out for the um, for the, for the photos out in the uh, instas or around the webs eventually. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it really. So with that being said, uh, take care of yourselves out there. Oh, how about we load up the raid first while I say these final advice. That's the one I want. Damn it. Alright, so with that being said, take care of yourselves out there. Stay safe. And I hope to catch you all in the next one. Alrighty. Catch you later.